the lake. I'm sorry we had a small mishap. Here are the keys. Um, here are eyes. Have a nice stay at Mill Park. You in our city. Still telling the same story, Josh? Powers of evil are very strong here. I must leave. Gobbles don't exist. Gobbles don't exist. And remember. to the Pope on Film. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... Reverend Steve. I'm the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, uh, founded in 1996 and still going strong. And before we really get started, I, I have a question for you. Sure. Michael, what are the goblins? <laughs> mm. I'm so excited about today. Before we get started, I, I, I really need to mention this. Uh, it's episode 35, and that's awesome. Yes, very, very. 35 episodes. That's pretty sweet. But um, you, if you're listening to this episode, you're probably really excited. You probably came here from one of our numerous media appearances over the last couple of weeks. You're probably Correct. very, very excited. But I, I really should mention that unfortunately, due to time constraints, we did have to bump President Obama from this week's episode of the Pope on film. And I know we have, we got a lot of press because it's like, what? President Obama's appearing on the Pope on film? And we were excited to have him on. Yes, very. We, we, really, we really do need the whole time to talk about Troll 2. Yes. And and that is really what led us to bump Obama like we did. We just we this is an amazing movie. We we need the whole episode. Even though Obama was only going to get a, a fairly small section of the show, maybe about ten minutes in the overall running time yep. of our average episode, 
Uh, it, it was an honor and it was a thrill, but I, I totally agree. Troll two can cannot be ignored. Yeah, we 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 couldn't even spare the five minutes, the ten minutes. We really needed the whole time, the entire time yes. to do Troll two. There's so much to talk about. And, There's so much here. And I the- would like to apologize to our audience for there not having been a show last week. I do apologize for that, but uh, I use all Adobe products and they had some updates and the updates, they didn't work. So uh, I had to dig out an old copy of my editing software and use that instead. And that is what caused the delay. So I do apologize for that. It, it, yes. And also a large portion of the delays also had to do with the fact that I have uh, kids and, as a, if there's anyone out there who has children who is listening to the podcast, they could probably. Fay Ray. Ah! Janet Lee. Ah! Adrian King. Ah! Heather Langenkamp. Ah! Ah! Amy Steele. That weatherman who saw the cockroach. That, oh my god, that is so shit. Oh my god! Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> and you. Come on. You know you wanna. Let her rip. <laughs> that, oh, my god. oh my god! There. Now don't you feel better? You are now officially a Scream Queen. Come play with the rest of us at www.screamqueens.com. That's Queens with a Z. Or you could subscribe to us on iTunes. Either way, it's going to be fucking fabulous. The Scream Queens Horror Podcast. It's where horror gets bent. Uh, yes, we were talking about kids because you were saying you were taking most of the blame for the delay in the podcast. And I was just trying to say that, you know, you don't have to take all of the blame because there's a a good portion of the blame should go to uh, should go to me and the fact that I have kids and they can sometimes suck. (laughs) <laughs> you sometimes suck too. I know I can sometimes suck. I know that, Bella. Kids suck too sometimes. Suck. It just happens. Sometimes hey, you hey, suck. hey it's a fact. It's a fact, I, kids. Yes, I Maxwell. Okay, okay. Yes, Maxwell. Yes, yes. What, Everybody what? sucks sometimes. Maxwell just wants you guys to know that he hates flies. There's a- he hates you fries. Hate flies, Maxwell. Yeah. Well, good to know. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to try and power through this podcast, but I can just barely hear you. Really? Oh. Let me try replacing the call. What's that sound? Coming to you through the electric mist, it's the Midnight Cinephile, with new episodes every Wednesday night. So, um... This week's homework was, uh, I, I decided just to, to hand this week's homework over to Maxwell, and Maxwell came up with the, the idea for this week's homework to get a piece of paper and to write your name on it and fold it into a paper airplane and to throw it at people. And uh, we had fun with this one. Yes, we good, all, good, good. All of us here in the family, we took turns writing our names on a piece of paper and folding it and throwing it at each other and uh, i got video somewhere i'll try and put it into a nice little package ah 
good. Okay. Because uh, we had fun with with this one. Uh, I think though, I need to you know, no, no, no offense to you, Maxwell, but this I week, um, I think I will decide what the homework is <gasps> this week. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that I, okay? I I neglected to write my name on it. But I threw a paper airplane at my namesake, Bunny Breckenridge. Really? Yes. Nice. 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 That is good. Hey, I I had an idea the other day because I was going through the home improvement section of the library. And I know that you are in no way related to Bunny Williams, the The interior design. Female interior designer, yeah. Yes. But I thought maybe it would help ratings for our podcast a bit if you could just every once in a while just put out a home decorating tip. That might not be a bad idea. You know, because if there was like if my name was OJ Simpson and I was doing a podcast, then I would just be like, okay, well, this week here is a nice little tip on, you know – Passing a football and killing people. Yeah. I, I, I've been trying to beat that bitch in the Google search for years. Yeah. <laughs> I am well acquainted with you, Miss Bunny Williams, interior designer. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. I am I'm, familiar I'm, with you. I'm just saying, you know, maybe one of these, you know, episodes you could just lead off with a nice tip on how to spruce up a room for spring or something that might help yes. then people listening Daddy. to the podcast would be like what yes. if you know I, they I, might I, get I, fooled yes but you're opening up old wounds my friend old wounds okay. <laughs> good, point. good point all right then well i go by steve my real name is esteban and it's it that's a painful name for me Especially since there's a real douchebaggy guitarist out there. Yeah. Who goes by the name Esteban. Well, there was also, my, there my, was also a Disney show for kids, and it was called The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Yeah. And there was a character named Esteban, and we used to get a lot of novels based on the TV show. And I would cut out the parts that mentioned him because a, a lot of times they would fit. Like it would say, Esteban was worried. He was always worried. And I'm like, yes, very much so. Let me cut that out and paste that to my name tag. <laughs> Esteban was scared. He started to cry. So, like, yes, okay. Let me cut that one out too. <laughs> so, I, I, there, there aren't too many famous Estebans no. out there. No. No. No, but my given name is also Steve, and you can't swing a dead cat without hitting a steve yes you know yes. and really I, I i could say my real name it's not a thing steve williams what are you gonna do google that you will yeah. never find me yeah <laughs> you'll find millions of me so you know getting into screenwriting and things like that you don't want to have that common of a name yeah so i chose bunny for a, like a lot of reasons yeah Maxwell, can you get off the table? Because, again, my coffee is on this table. And you worry me. Okay? Thank you. Maxwell's playing with the Joker's feet. And let me tell you, man, the name Bunny serves me well. First How off, so? First off, if you ever read Dale Carnegie, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People? Uh, no. When no, you, I am not. When you go to a party or a social event or anything like that, you want to be able to remember everybody's name there, so you say it twice. That's one of the tips. Yes. Okay? When I give my name as Bunny, it forces that person to say my name twice. And there have people that I've met once and then would not see again for like six months to a year later, and they remember my name. Huh. So that's that's point number one. That's really pretty handy. Point number two, there are a certain percentage of people who you say your name is Bunny to them. They give you a really weird look. They may even joke and comment about it. 
to which I find out in five seconds or less whether the person I am speaking to is a douchebag or not. I never thought of that. And that's, that's it. Cool. If you're giggling at my name, our conversation's pretty much over. I'm just going to humor you until I can walk away. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. I never thought of that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a great douche detector. Yeah. Um, I, I, I wanted to mention the, the last episode that we did, episode 34, the Death of Richie episode. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I did that, that, I did that long story about the, the Catholic Church sex scandal, which I thought was a, it, it, it's a good story. Yes. I think it was an entertaining story, but I wasn't sure if I should uh, mention it or not. I wasn't sure because I felt, I, I, you know, it's only very loosely based on, I can only very loosely tie it into our podcast. I'm not sure if I should mention it. And you said, well, you know, it's our show. We can do whatever we want. Mm-hmm. And so that really stuck to me you saying that. And Good. so I, I was thinking about that when I was doing my notes, I have three pages of notes here and they they look absolutely insane. Like if a policeman were to come in here and see these notes, I would immediately be hauled off somewhere and they would start <laughs> looking for bodies. That's what my notes look like then here. You are going to be arrested. I'm going to be arrested Maxwell. Yeah. Well, probably I do live in the Midwest. Have you seen my skin? Have you seen Daddy's skin lately? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's kind of dark. Daddy has kind of dark skin. And it was white. And what? It was white. Yeah. Yes, I, I was I right there. Yeah. So you, I said, I mentioned Troll 2 and how we should do it for the podcast. And yeah. you said that it was a and popular topic for podcasts. So I, yes, Maxwell, yes, what do... What do you need to tell me right now that is super important? You're going to be arrested. I'm going to be arrested? Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. a cop. Oh, you're a cop? Yeah. Officer Maxwell. <laughs> well, you know what? You would be a really nice cop because any time that you have a toy gun, you say, put your hands up. And then I put my hands up and give up. And then you shoot me. <laughs> so you Just would be like a real really life. good cop. <laughs> right there. You get like a promotion for that. that that's unfair. It's huh? totally unfair. What's, what's unfair, Bella? You give up. Put your hands yeah, up. Yeah, I, I put my hands up and I give up and then Maxwell shoots me. But that that's would horrible. make him a perfect cop is what I'm saying. If you actually had like criminal record, you would. Oh, oh Bella, you Eddie, poor, Eddie, poor child. Eddie, he, he, You're so young, Bella. You're Maxwell so young. understands that you are a Mexican. Yep. If, if I were to put my hands up, he wouldn't shoot me. Exactly. He knows what's up. Mm-hmm. So, so you said that Troll 2 was a popular topic for podcasts and for movie podcasts, and so I was trying to think, how can I... Um, um, how can I... Uh, Think outside the box here <laughs> and do something different. So what I want to do is, you know, I, I've i got a lot of notes here about Troll 2. I've got a, a lot to talk about. But also, Troll 2 is a really bad movie. So at any time during this episode of Troll 2, feel free to talk about other movies. Possibly better movies, because there's a lot of movies that are better than Troll 2. So or, you're you're saying that at any point in our review of Troll, Troll 2, either one of us can tap out. Yeah. <laughs> or or just start a completely, like we're in the middle of talking about Troll 2, and we're in the middle of talking about, uh, about the film, and then suddenly just... Listen to me. Now, Psycho. I got to listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> Now, that's a good movie. Psycho was a very good movie. Yes, Maxwell. What is it that you need to tell me? You can't 
fly out armors. You're right. I can't fly out without armors. without armors. Yeah. And you can't be Iron Man. I I can't be Iron Man. I don't have the money. I also okay. don't. I also don't have the former drug addiction. I have armors don't have. in my super. You have armors. Well, you should go and teach Bella how to fly then with armors. You should go and do that. And you should take uh, an hour and 45 minutes to do it. I mean, take your time is what I'm saying to do it. And I thought that this would be, Troll 2 would be a good episode to do this because you um, have a, a, a recent experience with Plan 9 from Outer Space. Yes. I had a recent drive-in experience. That was a whole bunch of fun. Cool. I've been watching a lot more movies, and I thought, well, this would be a good time to talk about, you know, some some of our favorite movie experiences, movies that we really like that might not make for an entire episode of our podcast. But just at any point in time during today's episode, feel free to talk about anything else at any time. I think I could do that. Yeah. I think we could both do that. I, I, I'm not sure what it distinguishes from a regular episode, though. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But the the randomness of it, there is just... We're talking about Troll 2. Feel free to just dive into another film. I'm not a fan of this movie. I think it's just probably because I'm just a bit too old. I mean, I know it's been called the uh, Rocky Horror of the MySpace generation. Um uh, I see merit in the movie. It's got its moments. Um, but overall, it's I don't... I just don't connect to it very well. You know? Really? Yeah. Not on, the, on a level that I connect with two other bad movies at. I mean, you know, it's fun. It's hearts in the right place. Yeah. You know, I, I would not look at anybody who said, oh, I love Troll 2, and I wouldn't look at them funny or anything like that. Just be like, oh, okay. People really love this movie. Yes, they do. People really, really love this movie. Yeah, and I don't want to disparage against their love for the movie. I want to encourage it. But for me, there's just a, a bit of a disconnect there. It, I, I, I like the movie. One of the, one of the things that I I, I... I remember watching it for the first time, and I remember going, Oh, okay, this is, this is pretty bad. This is pretty horrible it's kind of it's one of those things where i hadn't seen the movie but suddenly the movie i guess took off in 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 a bad way yeah so suddenly everyone was telling me oh have you seen troll 2 oh you need to see troll 2 oh yeah. you have to see so i saw it you know kind of with one arm behind my back and i'm like okay yeah it's Okay, it's it's pretty bad. It's but I didn't really like the film until I um forced my family to watch it. Yeah. Cuz I cuz I I said, "Hey, Natasha, why don't you watch this movie?" and she watched it. And then Emerald's in the room and Bella's in the room and we're all watching the movie and I didn't like Troll 2 until we all saw it. And I can understand that. I can understand yeah. that. Let me put it this way, okay? Citizen Kane, okay? Classic movie, well-respected, a lot of people love it, I amazing piece of art. I, I don't like that movie. I don't like it. It's boring. I can, I can recognize its importance. I can recognize its intent, all of that. Don't like it. I, yep. don't, need a, I don't need a movie about some rich cocksucker who controls people because he's got money. I, I could do without it. I will listen to the, the Roger Ebert commentary over and over again. Yeah. Because he tells me the good parts of the movie. Yeah. And they are good parts of the movie. I just can't watch the movie. That's Troll 2. Troll 2 equals Citizen Kane. I can see it. I can see how some people would like it and things like that. I don't really care to watch the movie anymore. But I will watch the documentary over and over again. Yeah. I watched Troll 2 twice for this movie, and I watched that documentary a couple of times. I love that documentary. And, and I think we have just made a podcast first, because yes, every podcast does Troll 2. 
you almost have to have a Troll 2 episode, but I think only in our show and this episode has Troll 2 ever been compared to Citizen Kane. Yes, that is probably a first. Oh my god, stop doing this. I'm sorry. I, I, I hate it when freaking I'm on the internet and suddenly some video appears and yeah. Oh god, I hate that. I hate that. I hate ads. I freaking yeah. hate ads. And another thing too, and, and we'll get to this eventually, but I I think there are only two people who would dare to compare Troll 2 with Citizen Kane. You and the Italians who made the film. Yes. Because mm -hmm. if there's one thing that the documentary makes clear, it's that everyone realizes this is a bad movie except for the people who made the film. And they get big points from me for, for being like that. That is what shows me that this movie had intent and had a heart behind it. And they believe they were making a good movie and will defend that to their dying breath. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, for absolutely. that, I say good on you. Yeah. Okay. So let's, let's dive into Troll 2. Before we dive into that, I'm, I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention the homework a couple of times during the podcast. All oh, right. I, 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 about five minutes ago, I realized what the homework should be for next week. And I'm saying this while staring at my kids. Kids, don't mention, don't say anything about the homework, okay? Okay? Bella, just promise me. I see you have a, a confused look on your face, but don't say anything. I know anything. about it. Don't no, worry. no, yes. Don't say anything, though. Don't say anything, okay? Because the importance of this homework is the fact that there are people out there who don't know what this is. Okay? Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So the homework is this. You need to go on Google and you need to type in Mokiki does the sloppy swish. Oh, my God. Mokiki oh. does Bella? the sloppy swish. You had posted that, hadn't you? Yes. Yes, okay. I did. I I'm done with homework then. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good. But Mokiki does Yay! the sloppy swish. Yes. Calm down, Bella. It is a thing to no. see. It is. It's amazing. And it bores into your brain like a parasitic tick in some Ridley Scott alien movie. <laughs> it's amazing, and I love it. And the whole family is just obsessed with it, except Emerald, because she's too cool for school. She's like, mm -hmm. But it's, it's an amazing... Yes, you can have a gummy bear, Maxwell. You can have a gummy bear. Speaking of Troll 2, have you seen the movie Free Enterprise? Free Enterprise, no. It's a, it's a weird romantic comedy that came out in 1998. It's this weird indie movie about these two uh, amateur filmmaker science fiction geeks. And they randomly meet William Shatner. A, and... William Shatner plays William Shatner. As he movie. only does anymore. And it, it's really cute. Throughout the entire movie, he, he William Shatner's working on a one-man musical version of Julius Caesar. Really? Okay. Yeah. The whole movie is just kind of like, a, okay, well, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a romantic comedy. You kind of know where it's going, but it's re, it's worth it because at the end, he does a the a rap song called No Tears for Caesar. It's a rap song Julius Caesar number from his one-man Julius Caesar play. It's really cute. Nice. It's a cute movie. Nice. And it's filled, with, it's filled with a bajillion different uh, uh, pop culture references, but that was the first time I really cared about William Shatner. Because and that... that was the first time I ever saw him play himself, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah? No. He was also himself in Fanboys, if you ever seen that. And I, I can't think of what else I've seen him play himself in. I think Free Enterprise came before Fanboys, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because this was 1998. Oh, yeah. That'd be before. Yeah. 
This is like the first time I ever saw him in anything. It's the movie stars Eric McCormick from Will and Grace to give you kind of an idea about how long ago it was. But it's a really cute movie. I think it's uh, for free on Hulu. Okay, well, might have to check that out. It's an adorable little movie. But speaking of, of Shatner, that reminded me to give a, a shout out to Dudley Manlove. Ah, yes. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, Dudley Manlove, who used a pinch of Shatner in his performance and well, really his, made it his own. His voice is amazing. <laughs> that guy's voice. The guy's yeah. voice is just incredible. He has, he has just the perfect radio voice. Yes. Like, I want to just follow Dudley Manlove around and see just his day-to-day life. And just, it's like, hi, welcome to McDonald's. May I have your order? Yes, I would like a number three. <laughs> and could I get that supersized? Because he has an amazing voice. Well, this is about my Plan 9 experience. Yes. So um, this was a, a local production of Plan 9 from Outer Space. Uh, but it was more than that because... What it actually was, a production of Ed Wood filming Plan 9 from Outer Space. Uh, so it's like Rosencrantz and Guildenstern of... Uh, yes, kind of. Plan although they, they did perform the full Plan 9 from Outer Space movie. Nice. And in between, they would change sets and Ed Wood would run on stage, start giving direction, and things would get, get chaotic and crazy and wonderful. This was just a big bunch of fucking kids playing and playing yeah. in such, you know, it, it, you just wanted to go play with them, you know? Yeah. And everybody was. So, like, you were not cast to play Eros in this. Yeah. You were cast to play Dudley Manlove, and then Dudley Manlove would play Eros. Nice. And they would not break character, and they would walk and mingle with the audience and things like that. Dudley Manlove had the voice down, and and he even had the snap dance and could do a little bit of it. You know, where he imitates yes. a, a tap dance he would hear, but he would just snap his fingers instead? Ah, uh, gotcha. <laughs> and he was even able to do a bit of it. So everybody was just spot on, and it was it was a, a, a fantastic, fun, stupid, crazy show um, that really needs to play bigger venues now. Is what I would say. Very nice. That's a that's a nice shout out to the cast of Plan Night from Outer Space. But you didn't do the shouting out part. Very nice. That was a nice shout out. That was good. Golf clap. Golf clap all around. Bella, join me in a golf clap. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Very nice. But they were all great. They were all great. Uh, Bunny Breckenridge did a turn on that character. <sighs> he specifically went out of it. See, each one of them, when they were assigned their part, like, okay, you be yep. Dudley Man Love, you be, you be this one, you be that one. Then they all had to go study those people's lives. Yeah. You know, and then bring that back to the performance. You know, so Bunny Breckenridge was really like, you know, I really don't want to be doing Bill Murray. You know, and he didn't. And it fits. And nice. it works perfectly. Very nice. You would have loved it, man. You would have. I'm sure, you know, it reminds me of some of the theater stories that you've told. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. I was in a I was in a performance of a play called Bleacher Bums about the about the about Chicago Cubs fandom, and I there was I I my character is just called cheerleader, and he's just the the crazy out there one who's just really obsessed and loud and goes nuts over the Cubs all the time. Yeah. And so there were a few performances in which I really got drunk because I figure, Oh, well, if I'm going to be watching this play, it, it was method acting really. Yes. 
Because if I'm going to be at a baseball game and I'm really excited, then I'm going to be drinking and then I'm going to get drunk. So I really did it. And so that just shows you how amazing of an actor I am. Exactly. And definitely method. Uh Yeah. Uh Very method. Same thing that Nick Cage did in Leaving Las Vegas. Yes. Yes. Oh. Oh. Or that might have just been a cheap excuse, but still, that's what he says. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh... Oh, but before we we really get into this week's movie, it's about that time. Perhaps we should take a a short commercial break. Yes, we should. Okay. We will be right back with this week's movie, uh, El Troll Dos. Would it be El Troll Dos? It would just be Troll Dos. Troll Dos. After these commercial messages. That's tough to say. Commercial messages, because there's a lot of like S's. Messages. Yeah, there's a lot of sh <laughs> in there. Commercial messages. Commercial messages. Commer- I- commercial messages. Commercial messages. Commercial messages. Yeah. Commercial messages. We, <laughs> okay, we will be know. right back after no, these. Commercial messages. No, no. Okay, you you say it really cute. Commercial messages. I can't say it. So say commercial messages. Commercial messages. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Maxwell, you say right. say commercial messages. That was adorable. That was adorable. We will be right back. We will be right back after this. Do you like comic books? Um. Me too. Do you listen to podcasts? Are you still talking to me? Cool. I have one called the Comic Book Update. So? I do weekly reviews of story arcs, comic miniseries, ongoing titles, and more. I don't care. I know, right? So all you have to do is go to the website at comicbookupdate.com. Why would I do that? We post daily previews of new comic books every day. Ugh. Someone save me. every weekend is Cosplay Sunday, with blog posts featuring cosplayers from around the world. Excuse me, miss, is this guy bothering you? Back off, buddy. She's with me. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, sorry. Nerd rage. Oh, yeah. So check out the comic book update at comicbookupdate.com as well as on iTunes and stream it live on Stitcher. The comic book update, the antidote for nerd rage. So, how was the first day of school? It was fine, I guess. I don't know. Do you ever look at someone and wonder what is going on inside their head? Did you guys pick up on that? Sure Mm -hmm. did. Something's wrong. We're gonna find out what's happening, but we'll need support. Signal the husband. Uh oh, she's looking at us. What did she say? What? Oh, oh, sorry, sir. No one was listening. Is it garbage night? Uh, We left the toilet seat up. What? What is it, woman? What? Signal him again. Ah, so, Riley, how was school? Oh, you gotta be kidding me! For this, we gave up that Brazilian helicopter pilot? School was great, all right? What was that? I thought you said we were gonna act casual. Riley, is everything okay? <sighs> Sir, she just rolled her eyes at us. All right, make a show of force. I don't wanna have to put the foot down. No. Not the foot. Riley, I do not like this new attitude. Oh, I'll show you attitude, old no, man. No, 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 breathe. What is your problem? Just leave me alone. Sir, reporting high levels of sass. Take it to DEFCON 2. DEFCON 2. I don't know where this disrespectful attitude came from. You want a piece of this, Pops? Yeah, well, look. Prepare the foot. Keys to safety position. Ready to launch on your command, sir. Fire! That's it. Go to your room. The foot is down. The foot is down. Yeah! Woo! <laughs> Good job, gentlemen. That could have been a disaster. Well, that was a disaster. Go.
Come, fly with me, Gachinha. Water to talk to us. Pope on film. Like our Facebook page by searching Pope on film. Pope on film! You can follow us on Twitter at Pope on film. Or email us at Pope at undeadcow.com. Not sure how to listen? Well, just find us in the iTunes store by searching Undead Cow. It's all one word. And you know, if, if you're really hard, hard up, you can always find us on Stitcher and of course YouTube at youtube.com slash users slash undeadcowfilm. I gotta go home and try to talk my girlfriend into an abortion. Very much shame now. Never cried. I'm gonna let go of my high school days. I oh, am. Yeah. And we're back. Uh, during the commercial break, you were telling me a really, really sad story about your childhood growing up in an orphanage. Why don't you expa- expand on that for our listeners who may have missed that? Well, uh, yeah, I really didn't want to say that on the air, but as some of you know, some of my Facebook friends, you, of course, uh, Jeannie, definitely know that uh, I was uh, born a, a small girl child of Latino, African-American descent, um, and we lived in a very poor neighborhood to eventually I had to be put in an orphanage. Um with, uh, I, I, I hate to I'd hate to interrupt you, what? but I just want to make sure that you're not recording this while also being engaged in a high speed pursuit with authorities. That's not happening, right? I you're not like am four, in high speed right pursuit Broncoing because not, it because while recording the episode, right? Because some of the police in this state do not want to recognize that marijuana is legal now, uh, so there is a bit of a of a high speed pursuit going on um but i was in an orphanage of zaroathrians um so all of the sisters had three snake-like heads so it was a pretty terrifying place to be raised as as a small girl child well that's 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 you know very strong of you to admit that and thank you and i think that all of the uh, podcast listeners thank you as well that you're that was welcome. really inspiring. That was really inspiring. Now, you want to say what, Maxwell? Please, Maxwell, what do you have to say? I, I need a moment. I want to say that. Okay, Maxwell, say that. Poopy toots. That's your that's your that's your catchphrase. That's going to be on all the shirts and bumper stickers, Maxwell. So, yeah, Bella, don't steal Maxwell's catchphrase. Know, that's that's beneath you. How that's is beneath it, you. That's beneath you. How is it? Uh, Come up with your own catchphrase. I can't. I don't. Well, work on it, okay? That'll be your homework, your personal homework. Come up with it. And keep Bankable your dirty catch- mitts off of It's a Pippin. Yeah, yeah. Don't use It's a Pippin, okay? Because I'm, 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 I'm really punching that one home. Come up with your own catchphrase, okay? Come up with some ideas and get back to us. But. This week's movie This week's movie is Troll 2 and it is a classic film based obviously yeah. on the legendary William Shakespeare play Troll the Second. Yes. Um and this is of course common knowledge. Everybody everybody knows that William Shakespeare's Troll the Second was a in an, an amazing play that was performed a long time ago. Some people say that the play wasn't actually written by William Shakespeare. It was written by Kevin Bacon and that Kevin Bacon wrote all of Shakespeare's plays, which is amazing. Well, I was, I was thinking something like that because I I was under the impression that William Shakespeare's troll. The second is a direct ripoff of troll two. Um, and he was in that episode of Doctor Who, so we know he time traveled. 
Uh, so maybe yes. maybe he got the idea from Troll 2 and then had Kevin Bacon write a pass on it before taking it back into the past and claiming it as his own. That's good thinking. That's good thinking. We'll have the scientists looking into that. We'll have the scientists working on that. But I thought, you know, a, a, so that in order to cult, to, to, to show our culture, to uh, really give this podcast a shot in the arm of good old fashioned class and sophistication, that we could perform a few scenes from the legendary play Troll the Second by William Shakespeare. Oh, yes, of course. Let's do. Yes, let's let's do um, um, the legendary hospitality scene from the original play Troll the Second by William Shakespeare. Are you ready, sir? Um, I, I'm ready. I just find this a little moving, so I'm a yeah. little verklempt. Go ahead. Really excited about this. We haven't done any theater since episode 17. So we're bringing it back. That so, was the Blood here. Feast episode, right? Yes, that was the Blood yeah. Feast episode. Let me get into let me get into character. Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. The arsonist has oddly shaped feet. The human torch was denied a bank loan. Okay, I am ready. <laughs> okay. Bella, can you please not be singing songs from Blues Clues when I'm about to do a William Shakespeare yes. play? Yes. yes. Come I on. I Here I am trying to do Shakespeare and you're singing the male song from <laughs> Blues Clues. Very distracting. Okay. <clears throat> Doth thou see this writing? Doth thou know it what the words doth means? Hospitality it. And thou cannot pee on hospitality it. I, I shan't allow it, good sir. What thou art going to do with me, mine father? Thou art tightening mine belt by one loop so that I shan't feeleth the most strenuous pains of hunger. And thy fair sister and dear mother wilt hast to doth likewise. Well, young Joshua, thee want to be receiveth of a rough nature with me? Thee want to showeth me that thee don't like the choice of this house for our most noble vacation by embarking on a strike of the hunger? Well, verily, thou doth accept mine dare. But recall thusly, at which hour I wast thy age, I very much didst suffer from the pains of much hunger. Therefore we shall seeth who gets through this, but recall thee well that I hath got more practice than thee. Farewell then, until the morrow. And scene. Thank you. Bravo, thank you. Thank bravo, you. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. Thank you. Seriously. Thank you. No applause. No applause. Thank you. No, some applause. Some applause. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that is enough applause. Thank you. Thank you. Troll 2 has quickly become the quintessential bad movie. It, it really got me thinking about bad movies, and it's weird and funny to me that they still call Plenty from Outer Space the Citizen Kane of bad movies, because over the last like 10 or 20 years, the last few decades has been such a golden age of bad movies, yes. because now, with tech, the rise of technology, pretty much anyone can make a movie. <laughs> This is true. And we have, uh, there have been such bad movies out there. Uh, and The Asylum. Yes. They're working overtime making bad movies. Uh, Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron. Kirk Cameron. He's, he, uh, his movies are way down there on the list of bad movies. Uh, Birdemic. The Oogie Loves in the Big Balloon Adventure yes. and the possibility of more Oogie Loves films to no, come. No, 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 no. Uh, it, is, it is so, the end times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Plan 9 from Outer Space really has nothing on Troll 2. Plan 9 has nothing on uh, The Room or Birdemic or Mega Shark versus whatever we can think of this Octopus. week. Right. That was the I mean, original. It, it, it's it's interesting that Ed Wood is considered to be such a bad filmmaker, but on the IMD, IMDb list of the 
worst 100 movies of all time, there is not a single Jerry Ed Wood Shark movie on there. Jerry there's like Shark two or three Kirk Cameron movies on there, but there's not a single Ed Wood movie. It's interesting because people say, oh, yeah, Plan 9 from Outer Space, the worst movie of all time. But I would watch Plan 9 three times before I watched any of the other movies that are on that list. Well, did you did you hear the action surrounding um, Kurt Cameron Saves Christmas? I, I, I remember wanting to see that movie defending Christmas or surviving Christmas, something like that. Something like that, but... Um... I forget if it was on IMDb itself or if it was uh, on fuck Rotten Tomatoes uh, on one of these boards, one of these groups, one of the bigger ones. Uh, he had like convinced a bunch of his followers to show up and uh, give it a ten rating. Yeah. Okay. Which a lot of people felt is dishonest, but me being, you know, I, I would do it too. You know what I mean? You put something up, you get, you get a Kickstarter or anything like that. You just try to cur- encourage all your friends to either give money or give your movie a, a high rating or things like that. It's just kind of what you do. So I don't blame Kurt Cameron about that, but a lot of fucking people did, and there were organized campaigns to get out there and give it a zero. Yeah, I, I see that. I, I, I'm reading I'm reading a bit right now. Uh... On November 20th, uh, Kirk Cameron responded to the negative reviews by posting on his Facebook page, help me storm the gates of Rotten Tomatoes. All of you who love saving Christmas, go rate it at Rotten Tomatoes right now and send the message to critics that we decide what movies we want our families to see. The attempt resulted in a severe backlash. (laughs) And, uh, you know, except that he's just a douchebag. I don't fault Kurt Cameron for having done that. I mean, you know, if we were putting something out, we would rally our fans to try to help us out and things. Oh, yeah. You know, Absolutely. of course, he makes it a mission from fucking God. Yeah. But, well, you know, that's his shtick, you know? Yeah. So I had nothing against that. I just found it funny that people were, that a lot, so many people did. And it's almost like any excuse to get Kurt Cameron, and fucking rightly so, you know? Yeah. Uh, Three weeks after its release, it became the lowest rated film on IMDb's bottom 100 list. Cameron responded to the low ratings, say that it was due to a campaign on Reddit by haters and atheists to purposefully lower the film's ratings. That he incited. I'm I'm pretty sure I saw haters and atheists live uh, in like 2008. Pretty sure I saw them live. I remember it was a pretty good show. I was pretty wasted at the time, I think. Was it their show or did they open for somebody? I think they opened for somebody. Was it Arsenal? Possibly. I'm pretty sure I did see it at the Bourbon Room now that I think about it. Was that thunder? Is it raining over there? Yeah, we're we're kind of in our rainy <laughs> season. Oh. Nice. That was. I was confused because that sounded like stereotypical rain. It didn't sound like thunder. It sounded like you have a a, a foley artist hiding in your house. Yeah. Who's was just making foley noises during the podcast. Is what that sounded like. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. I, I hope that doesn't come out in editing. Yeah, I hope so too. If I so, can save it, I will. <laughs> The general concept of Troll 2, which is, which is wonderfully explained in the documentary Best Worst Movie, which I, I watched a bunch of times uh, for this podcast. I love that documentary, and it, you, it, they really do go together. It, it, the documentary is on Netflix. You should see it. Um, it's the not cons- currently on Netflix. I went looking for it. Oh, it's not. I watched it on Netflix. Maybe they took. You know what? They prop. It may have. They may have taken it out. Did you check for it today? I have not checked for it today. Okay. No, I was wondering. Maybe I know that they take things out in the beginning of the month. Maybe they did that. I don't know. But I watched it last week. Uh, I I don't know. I don't know. But uh, the concept 
that they were going for and failed miserably at is a concept that I can get behind. They made a horror movie about how vegetarians are evil. Yes. Yes, it, I, it, it most certainly did. That's what they were going for when they made Troll 2. They didn't succeed. Mm-hmm. But that's what they were going for. And I can get behind that because I love eating meat. Yes, I do. Mm, I love so meat good. so much. And I, I just, I just, I just don't understand vegetarianism and do you, veganism. Do you eat it and, rare? Uh, medium yeah, rare. Medium rare? Yeah. Me- medium rare. I'm, I'm a barely cook it kind of guy. My brother is a, is like a burn it to a crisp type of person. I do not get that at all. Yeah. I do not understand that. But it, it, I like the general concept of Troll 2 because there aren't too many heroes or movies out there for pro meat eaters. Yes. And, uh, you know, like Ted Nugent doesn't count. No. Oh, the only he is stuff, hysterical. He is hysterical. He is hilarious. I love his... I'm a redneck character, really over the top and just absolutely hilarious. Have the you only- have you heard that there is a push for a uh, Palin Newton ticket? Sarah Palin, Palin Newton- and Ted Nugent, yeah. Uh, Palin Palin Nugent. Yes, I had a hard time saying that. I'm pretty yeah. sure that's a new diet. <laughs> the Palin Nugent diet. Yeah, it's supposed to be better than the paleo diet. The Pale and Nugent diet. The, in the Pale and Nugent diet, you go to Alaska and shoot a bunch of animals and you lose weight. Yes. That's the Pale and Nugent diet. I just came up with it. I'm already working on the book. All right. It's going to make me millions. Well, to that, I just say I am in, you know? Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Cool. If we have to, re- if we wind up voting in any Republicans, Yes. Which I, I'm really doubtful of, but if we do, they would be the most entertaining too, and they would get my vote. Yeah. The world's gonna go to shit anyway. <laughs> I I've been really fascinated with Ted Cruz over the last couple of days. Yeah. But only because he looks so much like nineteen eighties Bill Murray. He does. He like really meatballs yes. and or Scrooged Bill Murray. He oh, looks exactly yeah. like it, and it's amazing. I, w- I, w- I would love to see him right now in the scene from Stripes where they're signing up. Yeah. 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 I would, I would love to see Ted Cruz just look at the camera and say, you mean yeah. like flaming? <laughs> <laughs> the only... The only Sort of. Awesome. Guys, Hi. stop fighting. You can both share that seat, okay? That's what I was saying. I love but Bella, I did get that seat for him, and suddenly you're trying to steal the seat, which I seems to be she your... I was over there, and I sat down. Oh, so you didn't steal the seat until he got off the seat, is what you're saying. No. Bella, do you know what middle child syndrome is? No. Okay, well, I'm not going to explain it to you, but... Just thought I'd point that out. Middle what? what? No, later. Middle child syndrome. Yeah. That, it doesn't matter, Bell. I need. I'm not even. Yes, Maxwell. What do you need to chair. tell me? He has most of the chair. Guys, stop fighting about the chair. Up. Put your hand up. No, please don't shoot me, Maxwell. Please don't shoot me, officer. He's got a officer Star Trek Max. laser. Uh-oh. Uh He's got a Star Trek phaser in his hand. Uh oh. You know. The only but the popcorn meeting. chick was kind of hot. Oh, you mean this movie was really devoid of hotness, so it might just be like the the hottest chick at the Denny's, you know. But yeah. she was kind of hot. Oh, you mean Credence Leonor Gielgud? I think so. Yes, Credence Leonor Gielgud. She really. The amazing- uh, she really knew how to holster an ear of corn, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The amazing thing about her is that she even overacts in the documentary about Troll 2. Yeah. And, and how is that possible for someone to 
overact in a documentary, okay. that's amazing. <laughs> maybe uh. maybe she is related to uh, John Lovitz. Possibly. Possibly. <laughs> Maxwell, stop wiggling your butt at people, okay? Wiggle your butt at yourself. <laughs> if you can, okay? Wiggle your butt at yourself. Uh, no! Okay? I'm not you. Stop doing the sloppy swish. Uh, I need to do it. <laughs> okay, so there's a lot wrong with the movie Troll 2, so let's try and break it down. Number one, the look of Troll 2. Yes. Um, this movie screams 80s. Scream. They, did you ever see Scream? Uh, actually, no, I haven't. It, it was a. I I like the idea of a horror movie that's also about horror movies. That was the reason why I liked Cabin in the Woods, and Scream does that a little bit. See, it's I, a horror movie a, about a bunch of people who watch horror movies because yeah. you never see that. I I wound up seeing Scary Movie first. Ah, uh, yeah. So then when I tried to go back to Scream, I watched it for a bit, and I'm like, I I know what happens in this movie. Yeah, and it just like took all the fun out of it. It's, so it's, it's yeah, that'll do it. When you see the parody before you see the original, yeah, that, that'll really ruin it for you. I showed, I showed my wife Psycho, and she was laughing through all of it. Yeah, yeah. Didn't realize why she was laughing through all of it, but it's because of a specific episode of the Brack Show which used to be on uh, Adult Swim. Yeah. And they do a musical version of Psycho called Psycho Oklahoma. Okay. And so apparently she was just thinking of that the whole time she was watching Psycho, and it ruined it for her. So Psycho was a really funny film to my wife. Okay. Understood. Understandable, yeah. I was just thinking because... Uh, MTV is turning Scream into a TV show now. I yep. saw that. And ah! I'm just not sure how I feel about that. Well, they completely changed the mask. And uh, again, I haven't seen it, but the mask itself will change the whole tone of the series. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if, I, if I'm going to like that tone or not, having seen... I, 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 like, have no dog in that fight. Yeah. You know? Because I haven't seen the first one. I don't care about a series either way. Yeah. I just find that interesting. I liked the first movie, and then the second one was about sequels, but Cabin in the Woods, that's a wonderful movie. Cabin in the Woods, that movie was a lot of fun. Yeah. That movie was oh. just a buttload of fun. Yeah, it's a horror movie about horror movies, and the one person who you expect to die first ends up saving the day. Yeah, exactly. And what, what, what really caught me about Cabin in the Woods is we saw Cabin in the Woods before we ever saw Thor. Yeah. So when he came out as Thor, kind of like coming out of the closet. I mean, we are talking about Thor. Yeah. Um. When we first saw him, it was like, oh, it's that dude. Okay. Okay, he might yeah. be okay. He was okay in Cabin in the Woods. Yeah. Well, uh, apparently, um, Cabin in the Woods was made like four or five years before yeah. they actually, before it was actually released. So he did Cabin in the Woods and the, and, uh, they said, oh, my God, look at you. You're amazing. You know what? We're going to make you Thor. <laughs> We're going to. And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I totally believe you there. Yeah, that movie got caught up in a lot of Hollywood bullshit and a lot of, like, developmental hell and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's an amazing movie. Anyway. It's so, it's so, oh, man, it's so. You know, with any movie like this. It's only good if you could see the love of the original that what you're taking from, like Galaxy Quest. Yeah. You know, Galaxy Quest really loved Star Trek. Shaun of the Dead. Shaun of the Dead really loved the Romero zombie movies and that shows. And Cabin in the Woods does the same thing in their way yeah. that they kind of spoof it. 
spoofed that spoofed several genres of horror movie. Yeah. Ugh. It's hated a, it's, it. No, <laughs> loved it. It's it's a horror movie about horror movies. Mm-hmm. And it's it's a it's a wonder it's a good horror movie while at the same time makes fun of horror movies. It's really amazing. Yeah, mm-hmm. I really I, like. I, um, I love the whole Bradley idea of Whitford the controls. in that. I'm sorry, what? I really like Bradley Whitford in that. Uh, which one was he? He was in the he was in the West Wing and Studio sixty on the Sunset Strip. He's I in really the, haven't watched television in a really fucking long time. He he, he was one of the two head. Doctor, scientist, people who, uh, the workers in the beginning. The workers in the beginning. Yeah, in the suits and the ties who who are kind of running the show. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. the control room. Was, I love the control yeah, room. Yeah, he was Hadley, the guy in the control room. He had the a kind of balding one or the other one? What'd you say? The kind of balding one? Uh, the other one. Okay. Oh, those two guys were great. Those two, because that it had such a normal, real feel, and this is what you do for a living, you know? Yeah. So you don't even notice the bullshit that you do for a living <laughs> anymore. Yeah. yeah, it's it's just a normal job to these people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, yeah. that was a that was a good aside. That was a good aside. That was a, Good aside for the for the middle of the. Now we got to go back to Troll Two. What was I saying? Oh yeah, Troll Two screams eighties, and that's weird because this movie came out at the end of nineteen ninety, but it really does feel like something you would have seen on Up All Night or something. Yeah, well, you see an overlap between the decades for the film style a lot. You know, that's yeah. why you see a lot of Star Wars ripoffs. They're like. 80, 81, 82, you know, you see him up into that period. Yeah. But it, 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 this movie, it feels like something that you would have seen, You like Elvira could have hosted this movie. Yeah. At midnight in like 1986. Yeah. Uh-huh. Except that it came out, it, it, it's weird. I I think the eighties, the very eighties look from the movie happens. It happened because this movie was pretty much filmed entirely with actors randomly plucked out of Utah, mm-hmm. and Mormons aren't the most culturally advanced people. Sometimes, sometimes Sad they can to say yes, yes, sometimes. They can be a bit behind, but they're the nicest people in the world. I love Mormons. They are very nice. They are very they, nice. They are so darn nice. I dated a Mormon for a little under two years, and man, they're just such friendly people. They're so nice and so kind that you're that it's oh, you you look past the fact that their belief system is batshit insane. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're I, so I, I've nice. always been polite to them when they've come up to my door, which there are quite a few Mormons in Colorado. Yeah. Um, polite to them. I've even engaged them in some chit chat from time to time. And then it's like, yeah, got to go. They're just like, goodbye. Like, all right, good. Yeah. We didn't talk so, about your wackiness. <laughs> yeah. About your planets. Yeah. So the film was made with actors that were randomly plucked from Utah with, like, no... Okay, yeah, we get it. You can do Foley work. (laughs) We get it, all right? God, stop showing off. The movie was filmed with random... I I do want to take this moment to say that I am really glad that we have God as a listener. You know, um... Please join the discussion group, and there is yes. a weekly drawing. So yes, thank you. Yes, let's not thank forget you. the drawing. If you can invite any of your god friends or anything like that, that would be nice. 
I think Krishna would enjoy the show. Yeah. Ganesha. Yeah. Ganesha, I, I bet you he would be more on your side because I think he really likes popcorn too. Yeah, probably. And pecans. <laughs> <laughs> so the movie has random people plucked from Utah, a lot of Mormons, but the crew is primarily from Italy and doesn't really speak, as far as I can tell, speak Mormon. <laughs> yeah. The, the crew pretty much did not speak English at all. The director, his name is Claudio Fragrasso. And he directed the film under the very Italian name, Drake Floyd. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ooh, right there. Band idea, Drake Floyd. You do uh, Pink Floyd songs, but rapping like you're Drake. Drake Floyd. Yeah, that's my, yeah, that's I can get around. Idea. Right there, Drake Floyd. Slip yeah, away that's what. the moments and make up a dull day. Yeah. Racing yeah, around rapping. to come up behind you again. <laughs> The sun is the same in a relative way. But you're older. You might. I think you got something there. I think you got no, something I there. I think I do. Drake Floyd awesome. is a good idea. Awesome. We might have. We might have to put this band together. The look. The look of this film stinks of a sort of cultural retardation. This movie is a foreigner's idea of what America is. You know. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like group. Like 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 a group of foreigners wrote what they thought was a look at life in America. It's a weird sort of cultural retardation. Like Michael Jackson, when he was alive and older and everyone in America hated him, uh -huh. but then he'd go to some, some foreign country and they still treated him like Jesus. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then he came back to America, and he's like, everybody loves me. But I also think that this movie speaks a lot to uh, the inbreeding in the Mormon community. Because this was an ugly fucking cast. Yes. This was a weird-looking... Uh, not ugly, okay? I take that back. This was a weird-looking cast. Yes, Everybody in this movie like looked like a normal person, but their face was just like skewed a little. Yeah. Yeah. I can agree with that. Grandpa Seth. Yeah. Okay. Grandpa Seth, I blame for the whole movie because he was clearly reading the child inappropriate stories. The yes. child was clearly getting upset, but no. Grandpa Seth had to keep going on from beyond the fucking grave. They don't really explain why either. No. And that kind of drives me nuts. Like, it's like, really, film, you're not going to explain to me why the dead grandfather is alive and helping him? Like, that's, that's kind of a deal breaker for me. Like, yeah, what the Grandpa hell? was more like Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> Like, what the hell? Okay, so the dialogue in this film is nonsensical fucking brilliance. Yes. This the, the script for this movie is like it was written by Maxwell in a foreign language and then put through the Babel fish online <laughs> a number of times to get it translated. Yes. There are some really bizarre all your base are belong to us style dialogue <laughs> in this film. And and I I wrote some of my favorite ones down. Okay. Okay. You're making a mistake, Grandpa. Who said they can? You should have said they could. Or what kind of fairy tale is it? <laughs> I really like that one. <laughs> Grandpa, are you really in hell? No, but I know a trick that a friend of mine who went there taught me. It's like, how, though? Is there some sort of like a heaven and hell chat line or something? <laughs> like, I'm in hell, but it, like once a week I get to talk to someone in heaven. 
<laughs> Hi, Grandma. What are you doing? Oh, you know, just playing the harp and hanging out on a cloud. What are you doing? And oh, you know, just 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 getting raped by Hitler. And only weekdays after four or seven, depending on your region, when the rates are lower. Good point. Good point. You got to make sure that the rates. Because that's a motherfucking long distance. Yeah. The Bonnie rates. Mm-hmm. The Stonehenge magical stone. The goblin's magic power. I have a theory about this script. Okay. After watching the documentary as many times as I did, I have a theory. I think that because there is a, a definite language barrier that they talk about and that they show in the documentary. Yeah. So my theory is that this script was definitely written in Italian. Oh, and God, yeah. badly uh -huh. translated by someone. But if you were to read the original script, I'm not saying it, it, it's going to be fucking brilliant. Yeah. But it's definitely going to be better than what we had in the movie. Oh, yeah. I could definitely see cleaning this movie up, you know, giving it another good pass on the script, keeping the same basic structure, and having a decent kind of, you know... um grim fairy tale horror slash fantasy kind of a horror movie yeah i could see that easily yeah i have, I have a good well, idea you would need good actors too yeah obviously i have a good idea i have a really good idea i i, I just came up with another idea i have two good ideas okay number one um we get a bunch of famous people to do bad movies. To okay. remake bad movies. Like you get the original... Can, can that be from any period of time? Yes. Okay. But I was just thinking like, how much would I have to pay like Nicolas Cage to just, here you go. Here's the script for Troll 2. Well, you Nicolas and, Cage you went Steve bankrupt. Buscemi, so. You and Steve Buscemi have a fun time making this. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, man, I would pay good money to see that and just get some like B and C list actors and give them the script to like the room. Oh, go, no, I, th I thought you were talking. We were going to be casting a higher end production of this, in which case I choose a uh, Brandon Cruz, who was Eddie from. Um, <laughs> the consequences of Eddie's father. Hey. That's why I was asking if it was any time frame. No, at I'd first put that kid I in that movie. No, at, at first I thought, like, really big-name celebrities like Jennifer Aniston, Brad Pitt, Julia Roberts. But then I thought, those people will never do that. So I tried to think of, like, B and C list actors. Oh, okay. Like, okay, so, like, Brad Pitt wouldn't do it. But, no. like, maybe if Tina Fey has a weekend for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She could force some kid to sing Row, Row, Row Your Boat in the backseat of the car. Yeah, what's the name of that song? Under Wade and Bulldog. What's the name of that? Sing that song that I like. Yeah. Oh, Maxwell, sing that again. Sing that again. Oh. That was very good. You that was very good. Made me drop my gummy bears, Maxwell, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Most of them are salvageable. I So... That was my first idea, just to get some some people and and cast them in remakes of bad movies. Yeah. My other idea, and I think that this is a a, a, a great one. So it it involves kidnapping. Okay. Okay. We kidnap Tommy Wiseau. Okay. The Italians, what made this movie? And the guy who wrote this Birdemic, like some Asian guy who made yeah. Birdemic, we lock them in a room Aye. and we keep them in there until they either write the greatest script known to man or they kill themselves. <laughs> because it, it could go 50 50. Either yeah. they're all going to kill themselves in there or that group of people are going to make the greatest bad movie in the history of mankind. That's an awesome, that's a, that's an awesome, oh my God, that's an awesome yeah. fucking idea. No, I, I, because I don't think, I think and that if we made that as a real movie. Yeah. 
Okay, first off, it's an easy fucking shoot. It's one room. Yeah. So it's an easy shoot, and it's a cheap shoot. You get a yeah. fucking room anywhere. There, put it there. So that's great right there. Yeah. And then if we give them, like, knives and restrict their food. Yeah. So that it's a real battle for survival. Yeah. We Maybe get a throw- James Bond voice in there being like, the human body can go without food for three mm-hmm. weeks. I, I, I was thinking I more of a, a well-motivated screenwriter yeah. can write a screenplay in three weeks. I was thinking more of a saw, but saw saw that's works also very well. Good. That's also good. Well, I was um less than less more poetry. Yeah, because that's. May I was thinking of also maybe throwing in um John Travolta because of uh Battlefield Earth. Yeah. But not exactly sure. John Travolta is just like so funny to look at as a career. You yeah. know, I mean, what huge lengths of time. Of just shit, does he yeah. do until he's blowing guys to pay the rent? Yeah. Then he gets like a major big movie. That's it. He's pretty much done again. Yeah. 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 Oh, I've got a good list coming up. He's, he's done list. hardly anything of note since Pulp Fiction. I really liked him as the bad guy in Broken Arrow. Broken Arrow. Yeah. Don't think that caught my attention. Well, it he, I it was an action film. He played the bad guy. I liked it because there was an obvious romance angle about this guy who's trying to stop him and this this girl. And I liked I I as like someone who has written a few scripts, I respected the fact that the the movie ended with the two of them shaking hands yeah it's like good job because like we all assumed that they were going to be making out in in love at the end of the movie because that's what we've been taught to believe yeah but way to have this guy and this girl shake hands at the end of the film like good for (laughs) you i i it's really hard for me to take him seriously unless he's in something really, really good. Cause I'm still old enough that every time I see John Travolta's face in my head, I'm still hearing like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and seeing him in a big fucking plastic bubble. Yeah. He was the no, bad guy I- in the Punisher too. And I was like, yeah, no, you're not. <laughs> You're not. I I like Broken Arrow because the 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 good guy has stolen the thermonuclear nuclear device that John Travolta was going to use to blow up the United States. I don't know. But mm-hmm. they're trying to get it back and they're shooting at him and John Travolta, all cool, just tells his lackeys can you stop shooting at the thermonuclear nuclear device? <laughs> All cool. I really like that line because that's 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 just a kick-ass line. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that line before. Maybe I did see the movie. I don't know. Possibly. That line is really familiar. So I, I've I've got a I've got a list coming up here, and I'm really proud of it. Um, but in order to 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 mention the list. We have to talk about the gimmick of Troll 2. Now, this confuses me, and I'm not sure how this is possible, but the movie was originally titled Goblins, but for some inexplicable reason, they decided to call the movie Troll 2 for no reason whatsoever so that they could ride on the coattails of the success of the original film Troll. So this is kind of like an unofficial sequel. Well, I just always took it that they knew it was a piece of shit, but they paid for it. They had to try to recoup their money somehow. Troll wasn't a huge movie, but at least we can attach it to something. Yeah, but they but they didn't they didn't pay any rights for the troll name. They didn't pay any rights for it to be Troll Two. 
And the people who did Troll 2 had had nothing to do with the original Troll. And it's really bizarre that you would just call it Troll 2. And then, like, how do you get away with that? That takes balls. That's a vaguely brilliant idea. Well, to also, just also that movie and just say, let's call it Troll 2. Sure. Why not? Also, sometimes things when when they're European get really confusing like that. So, like, they could have named it Troll 2 in Italy. And then when it comes back over, it would still be Troll 2. In most cases, if it wasn't taken. Like Dawn of the Dead. So there's there's um, George Romero's Dawn of the Dead and Dario Argento also put out a version of Dawn of the Dead over in Europe. Yeah. So when um, Luciano Fulci's Zombie came out, it was actually Dawn of the Dead 2. They... Let me go back a second. Over in Europe, they called they didn't call it Donna Dead. They called it Zombie. Yeah. So when Lucio Fulci's came out, that was Zombie Two. And then there was mm. a Zombie Three and a Zombie Four and a whole fucking series of zombie movies that progressively got worse. Mm. Although I think Zombie Three was made by a completely different company. Yeah. Something like that. But yeah, when once they go over to Europe, it gets really kind of weird. Well, that might be something, because Troll 2 is related to Troll in the same way that Halloween 3 is related to Halloween. Mm -hmm. But I have some ideas for some unofficial sequels Okay, that we could do. Kind of like they made Troll 2, I have some other ideas like that. Okay. They're only vaguely related to the original, but maybe we could get away with it. Okay. So I've got a list here of some really good ones. First off, Inception 2. Inception 2. Or, or I have an alternate title, Inceptioneer. Inceptioneer. Because it's more Inceptioneer than the original Inception. And it's just going to be about a man who keeps dreaming that he's falling off a bridge. And we'll just repeat that over and over again. Okay. And then, you know, it'll cost about... Forty dollars, and there you go. We'll we'll call it Inception Two. Release it in Europe. We'll have to have a scene featuring popcorn sex. Yes, we absolutely have to, because that and is going to be the next big big thing. And you know who I'm thinking? Go to you porn. It'll be just full yeah. of popcorn sex. Yeah. Huh? And you know who I'm thinking should star in Inception Ear? Who? Well, go ahead. TV's Jesse. TV's Jesse. Who? Who's that? Jesse. It's a TV show on the Disney Channel. I, it's called Jesse. I believe the woman's name is Debbie Ryan. Anyway, I have another unofficial sequel. This is going to be another really good one. Okay. Uh, Eat, pray, love two. Eat, pray. Okay. I have an I have an alternate title for it. Eat, eat, pray, love year. Eat, pray, love year. Eat, pray, love year. Okay. It's about a priest who eats too much and has a lot of sex. Can the whole movie be set inside of Julia Roberts' mouth? Possibly, but we will have to put a scene with popcorn sex. Yes. And for the priest, I'm thinking Gerard be the next Depardieu. Thing. Yeah. I'm thinking Gerard Depardieu should star as the priest only because he is getting kind of like doughy now. Yeah. Uh -huh. But he's still an, he's still a great actor. Yeah. You know who I'm thinking that to get? That priest will bring tears to your eyes. You know who I'm thinking to get for the love interest in this movie? Who? TV's Jesse. Who's that? It, it's a show. I it, I believe it is on the Disney Channel, and it's called Jesse. I believe the woman, the actress's name is Debbie Ryan. So this next movie, this this is a winner. This is a winner. Lawrence of Arabia Two. I have an alternate title yeah, for it. I was hoping you had an alternate title for it. Yes. Arabia with jazz hands. <laughs> Arabia. Yeah. And it's about a guy named Lawrence and his adventures in the hideous apocalyptic wasteland known as Tucson, Arizona. All the way to Tacoma, Philadelphia, Atlanta, LA. Damn it. <sighs> what? That song always comes out whenever you say that, man. Yeah. <laughs> to star in the movie I'm thinking like Eagles Tourette's yeah yeah I hate the fucking Eagles <laughs> it, 
to star in Arabia with jazz hands, you, you know who I'm thinking of getting? Molly Cyrus? No, uh, Tom Hiddleston, the guy who played Tom Loki. Hiddleston. Just because he's really pretty. I really he like it. He could do it. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. So here's my last unofficial sequel. Yeah. Um, the Love Guru 2. The Love Guru 2. Yeah. Or I've got an alternate title for it. Okay. <laughs> Guruier. 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 The Love Guru Will 2. Will he though? wander? <laughs> no, it's just going to be all porn. Okay. Well, thank God. How for bad that. of a movie was that? Like the Love Guru is such a bad movie that you go like it. It makes Austin Powers seem worse of a movie than it really was. Yeah. Like the Love Guru is such a bad movie that you go to Austin Powers and you go, "Were you a fluke or something?" Because because <laughs> you know he because this movie's really bad. Mm-hmm. Anyway, for the Love Guru too, I was thinking. You know, to have a scene with popcorn sex. I'm also thinking to get TV's Jesse to star in that one. Who's that? It's a it's a live action show for kids on the Disney Channel. It's called Jesse. It's about a small town girl living in the big city. I believe the woman who stars in it is Debbie Ryan. Have you seen the original movie Trolls? <laughs> Uh, I have seen parts of it. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen the, the whole thing. Uh, there are similarities. Uh, what kept throwing me off is the kid being named Harry Potter. Yes, that's amazing. And that's the only reason to see the film Troll. The the, the film Troll. Because it came out in 1986. And uh, 1986. 1986. Remember that date? 1986. Right. And the film is about a young boy named Harry Potter who learns that there's a secret hidden world of magic all around him and decides to learn magic to defeat the evil trolls. I mean, that's amazing. Yes. Uh-huh. If that sounds familiar, then that's because that's essentially the entire plot of the legendary series of books, A Song of Fire and Ice by George R. 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 Martin. Yes. A.K.A. Fatter American Santa Claus. It's a classic. It's a classic. Classic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Classic. So I, I like walked in like somewhere in the middle of this movie at one point, and I was like, "Did somebody rush out a Harry Potter sequel, or like a an unauthorized movie or something?" I, like, yeah. Weird. Yeah. Weird. So troll trolls, a horrible bomb of a horror movie. It came out four years before Troll Two. It features the legendary horror actor Sonny Bono. Yes. And the legendary horror scream queen Julia Louis Dreyfus. I had forgotten she was in it. Yeah, go for it. it it's, it's, it's a hideously unwatchable film. The only connection that I could find between Troll and Troll 2 is that Troll was filmed with an American cast in Italy. <laughs> okay. So there's a weird Italian connection to this. And that's probably the real reason why an Italian director decided to make his bizarre horror film an unofficial sequel to Troll, I'm thinking. That's a possibility, I would say. Julia Louis Dreyfus and Sonny Bono in a horror movie about Harry Potter. That sounds like a that sounds like a fever dream. Yeah. That sounds horrible. Anyway, I went to the drive-in the other day. Yes. That was, was Father's uh, Day, right? Yeah, it was Father's Day. Happy um, Father's Day. Yeah, my, my, my family and kids actually decided that, unlike most of the other years, to actually give a crap about Father's Day. Yeah. So it really threw me off to have my family care about Father's Day. But it was really nice, and they, they got me a lot of stuff, and they they made me things, and we watched stuff. It was a bunch of fun, and we went to the drive-in. There's a drive-in about 45 minutes away. There's a drive-in we go to all the time, and it's called the Chief Drive-In. It's in Chickasha, Oklahoma, and it's about a two-hour drive, 
but we really like it because it's 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 been around since like the the 40s or the 50s and it's so old that there's a a putt putt course in front of the screen oh nice and they have seats outside so that you it, you can like drive there and then sit down in the seats and watch the movie yeah. and i had never seen a drive in like that except in the outsiders oh yeah yeah, watching the original movie, The Outsiders, like they sneak into the drive-in and then sit in seats and watch the movie. And I'm like, there's no drive-in like that. There's no drive-in with seats outside, but this one has seats outside. We really like this drive-in, but it's such a drive. So we finally went to the closer drive-in. It's in Oklahoma City. It's called the Winchester Drive-In. It's been there since 1968. Yeah. And we watched a double feature, and they had an intermission. And I freaked out. They had a they had an intermission and they did an ad about the about the snack bar. And then the whole family freaked out because they said. um, And I I swear I call bullshit on this, but they said the the Winchester drive in has been out has been in Oklahoma since 1968. Here are some of the movies that were shown at the Winchester drive in and they they. It was like a 15 minute thing of all of the movies that they said played at the Winchester drive-in and it w- they showed movie posters and scenes from the movies and music from them and we were all just having a good time and just calling out the movies that they it, it was interesting cuz a lot of them we've done like they showed Race for Your Life Charlie Brown and they yeah. showed like a couple of other ones but then like it, it after a while I was like so basically what they're trying to tell us is every major movie of importance from 1968 to now they showed at the drive-in. And then I, I finally started to call bullshit when they, they, they mentioned clerks. Yeah, okay. And it's like no theater had clerks. Hardly any theater had clerks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hardly any movie theater had clerks. So you're but telling me that this drive-in a- had it? Well, a lot of them did run it as a midnight movie later on. Maybe. They could have gotten maybe it then. Yeah, maybe it's something they showed like five years later. Yeah. But that's when I said, oh, I don't believe this at all. I don't believe they had freaking clerks. I don't believe that for a second. Yeah. Jay accuse. <laughs> I accuse you. I don't think you showed that at all. You're just lying to me, you bunch of liars. But it was a really nice theater. We had a bunch of fun. Yeah. A really nice drive in. I like a good drive in. I've I I've, uh, you know, I've I've sat out brought my own chair, sat out a couple of times. But I prefer to be in the car, smoke a joint, have a beer, make out with my girlfriend. Yeah. You know, play drive in a bit, you know? Yeah. We watched um Jurassic World. Yeah. And that went Pitch through Perfect. the fucking roof, man. Too. Yeah, it, it it really is. It it doesn't feel like Jurassic Park 4. It just really feels like, okay, we're getting the first film and we're just doing it over again, period. Yeah. And that's that was the entire film. The entire film was like, okay, they got the parts I really liked from the first movie and they just redid it slightly. But the thing the thing that bothered me was that I would have liked to have seen more about the park only because they – in in the first movie, in Jurassic Park, they said, hey, look at this. We've created a theme park. But in reality, it was a boring-ass theme park. Okay. No, you really wouldn't want to have gone to visit Jurassic Park because there wasn't too much. What, there was, a tr- there was like a ride, and that's it. Like, you get in a Jeep, and you drive around the park, and then, period, here's the gift shop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was the entire... Jurassic Park. But in Jurassic World, oh wow, they really did make what looked like a realistic theme park. I would have liked to have seen more of that. Well, in, in then, the original you know, Jurassic the extras, Park, another problem I had, in the original Jurassic Park, it wasn't open yet either. Yeah, but it's like at least make like a there weren't really any rides in the original Jurassic Park. They, no. There wasn't anything in the original Jurassic Park. No. It's weird. 
Jurassic World, though, oh, yeah, I'd be lined up for that. <laughs> and another thing, too, I would survive. The thing I don't like about Jurassic World is that all the extras in Jurassic World have that kind of extra mentality of, oh, no, a dinosaur is coming. Quick, let's run over here now. Yeah. They're running, but it's like, you guys know that there are buildings, right? Mm -hmm. And you can go into them. <laughs> Why are you running like, oh, no, here comes some pterodactyls. Let's run forward. Yeah. And scream. It's like, oh, come on. You just passed five closets and a Starbucks. <laughs> Do any of you extras know what freaking hiding means at all? You guys just going to run around screaming and wave your arms? OK, fine, whatever. <laughs> I would be hiding in the Starbucks and looting in five seconds. But in all, you liked it, huh? No, no, I liked it. It was a good movie. Yeah, I, I, I've heard good things of it. it. It doesn't sound like it's a great movie, but it's been breaking the fucking box office. Avengers yeah. is really getting the shit kicked out of it. Yep. Yep. Wow, that's kind of that's kind no, of I interesting. Like that's like their first loss. Yeah. I don't know if they if they've taken a loss. They probably didn't literally take a loss. Yeah. I mean, more like losing the season. Yeah. I'll tell you what movie I do like, and I want to do it next week. Okay. Disney Pixar's Inside Out. Inside Out, okay. Yes. Disney Pixar's Inside Out. New movie. Um, I think that we should do it on a completely unrelated note. Check your Google Drive, but... Okay, the uh, it's a it's a girl who is part of a human brain or something like that. Um, it's a movie about a young girl who's eleven, and it's also about the moods that live inside of her brain and kind oh. of control her and help her out. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That sounded kind of interesting. Yeah, it, it reminded me of the show Herman's Head. Yes. I loved that show. That was a fun little show. Yeah. That was on the Herman's early, head. early Fox. Yeah. Wow, Herman's Head. I loved that show. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that for a while, but that's what I want to do for the next episode. I want, so I, I, I'm a big fan of Disney movies, and we did a Disney movie. It was just a really bizarre-ass Disney movie. Yeah. I had a Disney party at, at work, and well, I had a bunch We've of done a few. Band. We've yeah, done a few yeah, Disney's. Have. Yeah. Yeah. I had a Disney party at work, what, last week? And a bunch of kids came in dressed in outfits. A lot of the girls were dressed as Frozen and everything. And I said, kids, what's your favorite Disney movie? And whatever they said, I gave them a different one. Uh -huh. My favorite Disney movie is Tangled. And I said, yes, The Three Caballeros. Great movie. <laughs> You, little Billy, what's your favorite movie? My favorite movie is Frozen. Yes, victory through air power. That <laughs> movie helped us win the war. Good job, little Billy. What about you? What's your favorite movie? I like Inside Out. Yes, make mine music. <laughs> but I mentioned victory through air power a number of times. You also wrote a book this week. Oh, yes. Yes, the book I wrote. Um, I, so Friday night was our Disney party, and then Saturday morning I had a uh, Afraid of the Dark story time. And I, I, what I tried to tell the kids was, um, it's like, so kids, are any of you scared of the dark? And they all said, oh, no, we're not scared of the dark. We're brave. And I'm like, well, kids, it's okay to be scared of the dark. But let me go one further. You should be scared of a lot more than the dark. You should be scared of the light. You should be scared of the slightly dark. You should be scared of the too bright. You should be scared of everything all of the time. Yes. You should constantly be scared. It's important. So I wrote the book, There Are So Many Things to Be Scared Of by Mr. Steve. <laughs> and it's a great, great book. Try to teach the kids to be scared more. 
and the first page is a picture of a spider, and I said, kids, let me tell you something. There's a country called Australia, and in that country, spiders are 100 feet tall. Mm-hmm. I've seen pictures. feet tall spiders in mm-hmm. Australia. That's a fact. <laughs> Yeah, so that book is available out there. Yes, it is. For you to find the book, there are so many things to be scared of. I, I, I found the see. surprise twist ending very satisfying. Yes, yes. I put that one in for my daughter. <laughs> my oldest daughter, Emerald. That would I have to be, it would have to be Emerald. <laughs> yeah, absolutely have to be. thought she would appreciate that. Uh, the acting in this film is amazing. In Troll 2. Yes. It is definitely amateur hour. Uh-huh. Uh, it's, it, 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 it's like the, the people in this film were randomly picked out of obscurity, regardless of any talent they may or may not have had. It's like a human Mormon game of Scrabble. And they were all so weird looking. Yes, they were. We should take a break before going any further. Yes, we should. We will be right back with more of Troll 2 right after these commercial messages. But I'd like for you to pull my red along on this that I haven't actually gotten to make a full backing track for. It's called Insect Cities. And it's about uh, someone taking their clothes off at a park and then peeling off their skin. Cool. <coughs> anyway, okay, you guys are the redhead this. zombie crowd. You can, you can handle that. Oh, yeah. Or some of you are. Some of you may not be. I can't see. You took off your clothes in the middle of the grass and like the fingers of the sun, the light held you in its grasp. You loved the wind, you mumbled on a park bench. Holy Ghost and Holy Spirit, you mumbled like a godsend. The peeling backwards of your skin and the slow open of your ribs made the sound of soft wings and crumpled shirt sleeves. Time caps a letter held in between and dropped from hands that now know things, all now slip from memory. Scattered in the weeds grown around the family tree where the tendency runs and almost gallops, your words crashing endlessly into a cluttered pipe dream where you took off your clothes because they had become unclean. All this preconceived blood on your sleeve and there are needles in your fever dreams. There are fables in these secret things. Cry wolf and howl screams, be straight as beauty sleeps. Petals fall as ant hills dream. Insect cities just out of reach. Put some clothes on, let's be friends. <laughs> And we are back. And we are back. Yes. So you were and talking about the actors, and yes, I want to talk about their bizarre faces. Yes, but before we do, perhaps it is time for us once again to uh, 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 teach our listeners a little bit about class and sophistication yes. by doing another scene from William Shakespeare's classic play, Troll the second. Yes. Yes. I think okay. it may be time, yes. Yes. Let us do uh, uh, the second scene, uh, uh, a classic one. I will be portraying the mom, and you will be portraying the daughter. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> I beseech you, my fair daughter, don't hitteth that gent. Please, don't hitteth that gent. Wherefore not, mother? Tis what that gent deserves. A mighty spanking for a litter, for a litter of feces. Young Joshua is not a little feces. Indeed, he is just very sensitive indeed. And scene. I wrote and Steve. I meant to write and scene. I was good with it either way. I blew my line, man. Yeah, yeah, that's that's uh yeah, twenty points from Gryffindor. It was in the crease from where I folded it. What what happened to you, Bella? Was there an accident? Is this yeah, one arm is wetter than the other. Are you okay? Did did your water break? Do I have to take you to the hospital? No. No? 
Okay. Next, what we were getting the bubbles in. Yes. He swished around the water. Oh, that's that's okay. And it got me all wet. Okay. Well, be sure and get him a towel. Okay, and make sure it doesn't fill up too much. What is the deal that you have with these actors' faces? Let's start with the father. Okay. Um. You. Uh. George Hardy, the dentist. Yes. Charming man. Charming man. Looks like a young Jerry Van Dyke if you grabbed him under the chin and just stretched his face down a bit. That's that's a very... His face was bizarrely long. Yeah. That's an accurate assessment of what he looks like. He's really charming in the documentary. The, the, yes, he was. Yes, he was. And he was really funny at the horror conventions. Uh, yeah. The kid. That kid. He would make the, these facial expressions throughout the movie. Joshua? Yes. That looked like an alien's interpretation of emotions. And not real emotions themselves. That's good. I can see that. And I don't know, man. I could swear. I just This just comes to mind, though. I could swear I've seen a cut of this movie where that kid is up on the table pissing on everything. And I've watched really? it like four times on Netflix and, Netflix and it's not there. Really? Yeah. I'm not sure about that. Which one? Have you ever seen the one with him pissing on the food? No. No, I have not. Yeah. I just realized I'm looking around. I'm eating gummy bears and potato chips and drinking coffee and beer. That, I really am like the healthiest man in the world right now. That is why you are the trendsetter that you are. I am. I'm a trendsetter. <laughs> Setting trends. Mm-hmm. Taking names and setting trends. The father stated in an interview somewhere um, that when he auditioned for Troll 2, he auditioned in a room full of Italians. None of them spoke English, and they hired him based solely on the intensity of his performance because yes. they didn't know what the fuck he was saying because they didn't speak English. <laughs> mm -hmm. And somehow therein lies the problem with this entire movie. He gives There's, an intense performance. Yeah, he gives an intense performance, but... Pretty much everyone in this movie had never acted before, and most of them never acted again. This movie really is like the Mormon amateur variety show brought to you by Italy. Mm -hmm. Really weird. Okay. And tying in with the original troll movie, Troll Prime, as troll it were. Troll Prime? Troll Prime. At times, this movie feels like if J.K. Rowling were an American Mormon woman. Yeah. She would have made Troll 2, but it would have been written a lot better. Yes. <laughs> at least at least Troll 2 Troll Prime had a few like D-listers. You know who's in Troll Prime? Brad Hall. Brad Hall. Brad Hall, SNL from 82 to 85. He okay. hosted Weekend Update, for Christ's sake. Sure, it's a lesser <laughs> known Weekend Update, but he was a Weekend Update announcer. Perhaps Troll 2 just needed some more lesser known Weekend Update actors. Was that the Sniglets guy? No, you're thinking of Rich Hall. Okay. I know that because Rich Hall is in a specific episode of Cheap Seats. Okay. And they say, what's, and, and uh, Randy and Jason say, what's the sniglet for a washed up comedian? <laughs> but what Troll 2 needs is some more lesser known Weekend Update actors. So I want to know, where were Mary Gross and Colin Quinn when Troll 2 was being filmed? Yes. Mm -hmm. what, 
Hey, what was Charlie Rocket doing? He was still alive, wasn't he? Oh, I, I think he's still alive. He is? Uh-huh. What was he doing? He could have been in Troll 2. For Christ's sake. <laughs> I would like to give a shout-out to my oldest daughter, Emerald. Yeah. Emerald! <laughs> That's funny because she's standing, she's sitting right in front of me, <laughs> and she's giving her her look. She has a look. I'm sure she has a look. Yeah, she's she, a tween. Oh uh, well, she's 13, so I think technically yeah. is tween over. I think tween is like like 11 and 12. Yeah, preteen. Uh. So now she's just like a beginner teen. Oh. Emerald, the beginner teen. <laughs> mm. they, how would you describe the plot of Troll 2? The plot of Troll 2. The father... Well, first, the grandfather scares the <laughs> shit out of the little kid <laughs> with stories about vicious fucking goblins. Grandpa Seth! Like, it's not already hard for a small child to deal with the fact that his dead grandfather is talking to him. Yes. You know, I mean, right there is an issue. Um, then he fills his head up with the goblins. His father, at the same time, decides to take them on vacation to just some ass end part of the world. Tucson, Arizona, continue. Like it's not even Mayberry quality of interesting. Yeah. Never. Where they are refused normal food and forced to eat Nilbog food. Goblin spell backwards. Sorry for so spoiling the surprise. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah. Nilbog. Um, his goblin spelled backwards. And that's about it. And when they do, they kind of turn into plants and shit. There was a preacher. There is a preacher who seemed like a dropout of the James Bond school of villains. <laughs> the James Bond? Oh, I, yeah, no. Like, I thought you were going to tell me Bond. a dropout of Boses. No, I'm thinking, like, in every James Bond film, there are two villains, the smart one and the muscle. Yeah, true. So so he wanted to be the smart one, but then he ended up in the muscle school, and then he dropped out. <laughs> and I can picture him in, like, a suit roughing up, like, um... Roger Moore. I was going to say Roger Daltrey, but I knew that was wrong. <laughs> The the plot to Troll 2 is so strange and ridiculous that if you haven't seen the film, then I will no doubt soon sound like a rambling madman, which I am. But you should seriously find someone who doesn't know, know Troll 2, like Amber, and try and explain to that person what Troll 2 is about. Yeah. They will not believe you. So this is what Troll 2 is about. <laughs> this will be an interesting experiment because I have Amber right here next to me and she hasn't seen the movie. Okay. So goblins exist. Goblins still exist. Your grandpa Seth is telling you. So goblins exist and they love to eat people, but they're vegetarians. So the goblins have to turn people into plants and then eat them. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's confusing. Amber says that's confusing. So there's nice. more. There's more. So well, a family but at the goes same on... time, it was also su supposed to turn them into goblins. The Nilbog yep, food. There's... So like they went back and forth on on the power of the Nilbog food. Yeah. So a family goes on vacation to the town of Nilbog. Spoiler alert: that's goblin spelled backwards. Mm hmm. And they are attacked by the goblins. Only young Joshua, with the help of his dead grandfather somehow, 
knows the truth about Nilbog, and there's only one way he saves the family, by peeing on all the food. Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Amber. The young kid saves the day because his grandfather told him to pee on the food. We have to explain the food. Isn't the food the people? The food turns people into plants so that then they can be eaten by the cannibal <laughs> vegetarian goblin. That's a horrible movie. It's so the goblins are ruled over, I think, by an old witch with finger quotes. Witch yes. of sorts. And her name is Credence Leonore Gielgud. She's the goblin queen. And she apparently has the power to turn herself into a scantily clad young woman. And in the movie, she seduces a teenager and drowns him in popcorn while they're having sex. Yes. Popcorn sex. Popcorn sex. What is this movie? <laughs> she is so confused. It's just the look on her face is amazing. So she has the stone. It, it, it was some pretty good popcorn sex, all things considered. Yeah, I think that when history writes the book of famous popcorn sex scenes in movies, that that will definitely be like up there. Well, it's like it's like um, let's go back to Cabin in the Woods for a second and then go further. Cabin okay. in the Woods made a lot of use of the old horror slasher movie trope of the this being kind of a way station that you need to pass through from your world into the next horror world usually yeah. by an old guy who's like i'm gonna swallow your soul and doesn't like to be on speakerphone <laughs> but then you can trace that back to the same scene in deliverance mm -hmm. a non-horror movie and probably the first movie to deploy that way station idea of going from the normal world into this other world where you get raped by hillbillies. Yeah. And that's where the kid played dueling banjos. So this would be the same thing 20 years from now. When, if you were going to get any kind of big box office payoff on your movie, you would have to have a popcorn sex scene. Yes. I'm thinking that would mostly be in romantic comedies, but you would still be able to troll trace it back to troll too. You know what Jurassic World needed? Um, cats from some of the posts I've seen. No, uh, a, a good scene of popcorn sex. Maybe just between raptors. We raptors love are so hot. Oh. I would do a raptor. Emerald asked me, how do I do this with a straight face? You know, there's no video of my face it's, people Still, are just listening just, to both it of you are just talking so seriously about it well we we're serious people emerald <laughs> bunny and <laughs> i are serious sense. people when amber uh, is this amber or is this emerald that was emerald talking emerald 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 and amber are joining me emerald when when you get older and life has ripped your soul to shreds Yes. Will I be and everywhere you turn, it's just a constant disappointment. You'll be a cynical bitch just like us, and you'll be able to do oh, this with geez. a straight face. It's it's one of the she's perks. There. She is already <laughs> she is already so there. She is already so there. I gotta say, one of so the we only I, have to work on the straight face part. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that I really liked about Jurassic World is. There's a specific scene where they're talking to one of the doctors, and the doctor is played by the Asian guy who was the doctor in the original Jurassic Park, and I liked that. And one of the guys is um, scolding. One of the guys is scolding the doctor because they genetically modified it and created their own dinosaur. And the doctor yeah. guy's like, "What are you talking about? This is all that we've done. We've we've never not done this. You do know that." These dinosaurs shouldn't exist, you know, but we've been we've been playing mad scientists to create these dinosaurs for you. And sometimes we've even, you know, messed with them and made them bigger and stronger and scarier looking just so that it can it, it, just so that it can be more exciting for your park. That's like a that's like a like a like a simplification of the line. But basically what he says is. Let me fill in some plot holes from Jurassic Park. Yes. 
Because that was one of the main things that that upset me about the original Jurassic Park. It's like, yeah, sure, raptors, they're really scary. You also know they were the size of chickens, right? <laughs> they were the they were small ass dinosaurs, and they were also covered in feathers. They were covered in feathers and the size of chickens. But oh yeah, really scary, and they can open doors and shit. Sure, <laughs> yeah, okay, ooh. But with that one little bit of dialogue in the original Jurassic World, you just covered up a lot of holes in the original movie. And thank you for that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Good for you. Ten points to Gryffindor. Yes. Yes, indeed. You really should see Jurassic World. Uh, it's I cute. will. It's I'm cute. just I'm just so amazed at how like one by one this season every movie has been better than the last as far as what i'm hearing off of people anyway i I haven't gone out this season you know but people kind of liked ultron but that was quickly blown away by mad max uh the movie for next week inside it's something like that. inside out inside out yeah inside out is next week's movie that caught a lot of buzz yes and then jurassic world is tearing it up we're going to be talking about Bing Bong next week. Bing Bong. Bing Bong. Bing Bong. Oh, Bing Bong. Bing Bong, bitches! Going to make you cry. Going to make you cry. <laughs> going to make tears are going to be raped from your eye. All right. Seriously. Freaking Bing Bong. So anyway, Amber. Um... Credence Leonor Gielgud, the Goblin Queen, is in possession of the Stonehenge Magic Stone. (gasps) And it gives the Goblin their powers. It's from Stonehenge, and it's a magic stone. It's called the Stonehenge Magic Stone. (laughs) Josh, so then Joshua eats a bologna sandwich. Ooh, bologna sandwich? No, the bologna sandwich makes Joshua poisonous to the man-eating vegetarian trolls. So when Joshua, who just ate a bologna sandwich, touches the Stonehenge magic stone, Credence is destroyed. Bologna sandwich saves the day. Mm-hmm. What age group is this made for? Huh? What age group is this made it's, for? It's made for, um, like, three to eight. Okay, I'm just making sure. Yeah, it's made for really little kids. That's why there's popcorn sex and a dead grandfather. Is it made by Disney? There's always a dead grandfather. Yes, yes, yes. It's the Disney animated film Popcorn Sex and Goblins Eating Your Family. Oh, oh. (laughs) Starring Tim Allen. That sounds like Amber, how are you so dense? It it made me cry. Yeah, made made money cry. cry. This and uh, Bing Bong. So at the end of the movie, moving. at the end of the movie, there is a twist ending. They go back to their house and spoiler alert. The mom who is obsessed with the song, row, row, row your boat yes. is being eaten by the goblins. Boom. <laughs> twist ending. Shyamalan. <laughs> you just got Shyamalan. You got Shyamalan. That's what I do at story time. When I, I've taught the kids that a twist ending is. Shamalan. 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 Ding dong. Yeah. Shamalan. Shamalan. There's a weird appeal to this movie. And it. Because this movie really is a like a cultural phenomenon. The uh, the documentary uh, really goes into this and it shows the fanaticism that some people have for this. People really love this film. They do. There's, there's a weird appeal to it. And one of the fanboys in the documentary mentions this, but there's, there's, there's an honesty to the film, like an earnestness. When when I say that this film is earnest, I, I mean that it's honest and not goes to camp. Yes. Not that type of earnest. Although he would have been good cast as the dad. He would have. He would have. He's got that same kind of weird face. But because they... Let me check on him. But because they picked literal strangers out of the streets of Utah for this movie, 
you really do kind of everyone in the movie is a normal person. You know, there's an honesty to it. They mention Ed Wood in the documentary and they say that, you know, Ed Wood may have made bad films, but he really, really loved the movies that he made. Mm -hmm. And, and they were trying. Yeah. They were trying. they were trying so much. But still, you got that Mormon inbreeding. When you when you look at the mother, okay, and you look at that mother's eyes, you can tell that everything inside her is dead. She is a crazy woman. She is a crazy woman. She Oh, yeah, is, she's yeah, she's off her rocker now. Yeah. Yeah. But you can eat she's she's got the crazy eyes. She's oh. got the, she's, she's got, got dead eyes. vacant eyes. Yeah. She's got the crazy eyes like um the life aquatic with Steve Zissou. Yeah. <laughs> he's got the high the he he's got the the what is it, what do they say the hydrogen psychosis? Hydrogen he's psychosis. Got the crazy I eyes. haven't seen that since it came Steve, out. Steve, they say you've got the crazy eyes. <laughs> I love The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. That is my comfort film. Really? Okay. Yeah. Not exactly sure how, but that's just my one movie that I can put on at any period in time and just kind of fall into it like a glove. And it was done by a top-rate director, from what I remember. I just can't place who. I wanted to say was, Soderbergh or somebody. No, it was Wes Anderson. It was Wes Anderson. Oh, it, yeah? it, it stinks of a Wes Anderson film. <laughs> It's got Bill Murray. It's got amazing sets. It's got the kinks in the soundtrack. It's insanely finely detailed. Yeah. It it, it reeks of a Wes Anderson movie. <laughs> I love Wes Anderson. And, and a I, far better film than Troll 2. Yes, very much so. It, it, the, I I haven't heard anything from this in a while, but I did hear that the creator of Troll 2 was working on a sequel that he wanted to make with the original cast, and it was going to be called Troll 2 Part 2. That sounds a little familiar. I don't think it got any weight under it, though. I don't think so either. But speaking of sequels, you know, right now they're filming a sequel to God's Not Dead. Are they? Yes. Uh. It's going to star, um, what's her name from Clarissa Explains It All. Oh, what is that movie? What is that woman's name? Uh, I'm trying to find it right now. Hillary Duff? No, Melissa Joan Hart. Okay. It's filming right now in Arkansas. <laughs> Arkansas? Arkansas, yes. Amber, it's being filmed right now in Arkansas. That's a good place to, f to film it. Yes, that is a good place to film God's Not Dead 2. God's Not Deadier is what I'm hoping is the full title. Die Harder. I, I, I would go with Die Harder, I think. Um... Do you wonder if they're going to touch on possibly ooh, gay marriage? Well, I live in Oklahoma, yeah. so um, I am fully aware um, that pretty soon Obama's going to force us all to get gay married. Yes, I, I've heard this too. That's a fact. I've heard and this too. And another thing too, he's taking all our guns. He's taking all of them. He's taking I, all the guns. I went so far as to try to find a, a, a gay mate, even though I'm not homosexual. I figured, you know, this way at least it's my choice. Yeah. You know? And let's face it. Once you get married, the sex is over anyway. Yep. So <laughs> where's the harm? <laughs> yeah. Might as well. Pretty soon Obama's going to force us all to get gay married and... Yeah disavowed jesus mm -hmm. we used to go to church we used to go to church in sacramento california and it it the church was 70 percent korean 
but the pastor was from the South. And so we didn't talk about Jesus. We talked about Jesus. Jesus? Okay. Jesus. I, I'm pretty sure he spelled it in his head G E E S H U S H. Because that's how he pronounced it. We were constantly talking about Jesus. And the thing about Catholics is sure, the priest might be raping people, but there's a script there. They have a script they go by. They have a time limit. I mean, you go to church uh-huh. in, in Catholics and sure, there's like moves. You know and when to kneel and stuff, but you're out of there in an hour. You are gone in an hour. Yes. Uh-huh. I was, Suddenly I'm going to this like a Southern Baptist church in Sacramento and it's like, Natasha. It's been two and a half hours and we're still at church. (laughs) Can we just go? Please. I tried to convince my oldest daughter to go with me to church last Sunday. Yeah. Just so that I could see what they had to say because the gay marriage ruling. Like, I really wanted to be there to see what they had to say. I wanted to go there so bad. Because, oh, man, it would have been so much fun to see what they had to say. Like, I would have live tweeted the shit out of that. Man. I... <laughs> oh, so man. Now, so now, bouncing off of that, so now I go to Plan 9, okay? And I, I, had, I had already known a couple of people in the cast because um, they were at my friend Timmy's <laughs> show for the last video I did of yeah, Timmy. Should be getting so I go there. And I, I asked him if I could do the Woody and Blessing. Very nice. So they were like all over themselves. They loved this idea. And I opened the show with the Woody and Blessing. Nice. Half of the Woody and Blessing, to be honest. Because it seemed like, you know, there was a lot of energy in the room. I didn't want to take up time for the full thing. You know? Yeah. And they were calling me Reverend, which I was not very sure about for a little while but um had a great time all that loved the show they asked me to come back just this past sunday because that was going to be the last day of the show yeah so they they wanted me to come back and bless the final show so i when they blessed the final show and I totally forgot how I was coming here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was it that you were saying before that? Because that's what got me on this track. Um, I was talking about how... Um, uh, about oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, so I go there Sunday, and I'm walking up the sidewalk, and one of the cast comes up to me, and I, I know him. I've known him for for a while now. He comes walking up to me, and he was like, they want you to bar- marry Bunny Bar- Breckenridge to David whoever. I forget what his name was. David Guetta? And he left. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, I was like, I, 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 okay, you know, yeah. Um, I don't have a wedding ceremony. <laughs> then Jeannie was parking up the parking the car, so she was coming up. And, and I told her this, and she was like, you're not ordained. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't know but it was a false wedding that was a part of the show something that they've been joking about all week or something like that and supposedly the show was a big hit on Friday in particular because everybody was celebrating Um, and I'm almost positive that this is a gay club yeah a lot of pictures of men things like that you know like I can get a clue, you know? Yeah. But you really don't want to ask anymore, you know? Mm. Yeah. So I married them in one of the worst ceremonies ever. And Um, that was it. I, to be fair, I'm pretty sure the worst ceremony ever was the one that Mr. Bean did in the movie Four Weddings and a Funeral. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. I loved that movie for a very small window of time in the 90s. I have not seen it. It just never caught me. 
it it it's it's cute. It was the first film where Hugh Grant showed his like bumbling love interest side, and he does it perfectly. Yeah, everything else he's been in has been shit, but it, it's a really cute, adorable little movie. Four yeah. Weddings and a Funeral. That's a darn good movie. <laughs> There's a gay, there's a, a wonderful gay relationship in that movie, and that's just absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Oh, but I guess none of this matters because pretty soon Obama's going to be forcing all the gay people into death camps. I mean, all the straight people, all the the God loving all, all the straight people. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm kind of waiting for him to get on with that. I'm still, uh, I'm still miffed. At that pastor who was said he was going to set himself on fire because I was I really looking forward to that. That would have been awesome, like a pay per view. I would have bought that pay per view. Uh, yeah, uh huh. Could have raised a lot of money for the church, and uh, well, as far as it seems, he's kind of pussied out on that. I haven't bought a pay per view in forever. <laughs> do pay per views still exist? I guess they do because of uh, Ufcha. You Ufcha, know, Ufcha. Yeah. Yeah. Ufja. The 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 mixed martial arts fighting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ufja. It's spelled UFC. Uh -huh. Ufja. Ufja's all popular. <laughs> uh and and they do pay-per-view events. Uh I'm still upset. I'm still upset that um uh they have not they have yet to announce season 2 of Lucha Underground. Oh, I'm getting no. scared. I'm getting really scared. But they're ending their first season at the end of the summer with the big event called Ultima Lucha. It's going to be like two hours long, and it's going to be on the El Rey Network, which I don't know if anyone has, but I just download all the episodes. But I, I really, really am hoping. Like, every day I wake up, and I'm like, today's the day. They're going to announce season two, and I no longer have to worry. <laughs> so uh, one day I, I tweeted... I do. I say it to myself. I don't say it to you because you're asleep because you go to sleep. My daughter Emerald goes to sleep at around three or four a.m. Yeah. Every morning and wakes up at the crack of one. <laughs> it's like, oh, my God, you're going through like, ah, uh, you're going through just all the phases of teenage life. Emerald. I know. That's why I find Emerald so interesting. <laughs> she is she's interesting. And the thing is that she's at that age where she's a teenager in ways that, that like, I'm not supposed to talk about as, yeah. a, as a dad. But she's, oh, she's getting cynical and she stays in her room. And the room is kind of curtained off so it's all dark all the time. Yeah. And um, you know what this situation needs? What? Sylvia Plath. <laughs> you want to fight? Emerald just challenged you to a fight. <laughs> oh, I think I could take a 13 year old girl. Got and it. I, and I better do it before she turns 14. <laughs> right? <laughs> Sylvia Plath. <laughs> nice. Very no, nice. <laughs> Are you there, God? It's me, Emerald. <laughs> my friend Timmy. <laughs> my friend Timmy. Timmy. Timmy's been. I don't know if you know it, but Timmy's been on the show a good couple of times. Timmy O'Toole was he stuck in a well once? Timmy Vigiletti, uh, a local musician, he's kind of nuts in a very appealing way. A very positive kid too. Uh, does basically folk music and and he's he's one of my favorite subjects to shoot so i've shot three videos on him so far uh he is doing a a, a show on the college local college radio called um grease fire yeah and it's about the refrigerated tube at the end of the universe uh, where they only serve tilapia and burnt chocolate pudding. Okay. And uh, he just had me on this Monday for episode three, where I was this guy, this older guy, uh, who wears a top hat uh, and sunglasses at, at night, um, long white beard. Um, this was the character. Um, he, he was a really big asshole. Um, 
that was for the character too. And I had to go on a rant about Sylvia Plath. So that's how that came around. Ah, Sylvia Plath. Yeah, you're bringing it around. Bring I'm going to have to get you the link because I think you would really like Grease Fire. Cool. It's insane. It has talking oatmeal. Okay. Talk. Um, 60 foot uh, spider workers who are very insecure. And that is real in Australia. Yes. <laughs> in Australia, that is real fact. I'll have to get you the link. I'll throw it in the in the um on the page in the discussion group. Cool. I really I really liked uh the last episode and how you uh started with my fake death of Richie trailer. <laughs> yes. I, that. I could not find a real trailer. That's weird cuz I did. Apparently, yeah. So I don't know how I found one and you didn't. But you are a better searcher than I am. Well, no, I am. I am. But I was like, yeah, I tried searching for it, and I was just wasn't coming up with one. And I was kind of in a place where I was thinking, like, oh, great, what the fuck am I going to do? And then you said you had a trailer, and I was just like, oh, fucking thank God. Yeah. Awesome. Get that to me. I need it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but next week we're going to do Inside Out. It's a new movie. It's out in theaters. You know, this will be like our Guardians of the Galaxy episode. We're going to touch on on a new movie, a popular movie that's out. I'm going to talk about Disney. I'm going to talk about Pixar. Because Pixar mm -hmm. tries to put out a movie every year. And they have for the longest time. I think since the first Toy Story movie, yeah. they've come out with a movie a year. But... They were supposed to have this movie out called The Good Dinosaur, and they had just a myriad of problems. They eventually fired the director, and they hired a new director, and they decided to completely redo the movie, and they said, okay, we are going to push back The Good Dinosaur, and the pushing back of the movie The Good Dinosaur caused a ripple effect in the entire Disney-Pixar release schedule. So last year was the first year since the start of Pixar, that there was not a Pixar movie. Yeah. So last year, there was no Pixar movie. And then to make up with that, there's two Pixar movies this year. Yeah. There's Inside Out, and then in November, we're getting The Good Dinosaur. And then next year is the sequel to Finding Nemo. Oh, okay. Which I'm very excited about, because I love Finding Nemo. I would rather see a, a sequel to Incredibles. Which I've, I've heard talk of. Yeah, no, after Finding Nemo, so 2015, there's two Pixar movies. 2016 is Finding Dory, the sequel to Finding Nemo. And then 2017 is The New Incredibles. You know what Pixar really needs to do? Uh, porn? And this is going to be a really revolutionary idea, but they're going to have to try to figure out how to get all these characters into, like the same universe you know the kind of thing i mean you know where you can have stories overlap and things like that yeah yeah you mean like uh you mean like dc films do um or are trying to do yeah <laughs> yeah they're setting them themselves up for that kind of idea and it's it's really a stroke of genius but i think i think pixar should get in on that too well, they are sort of in a shared universe in the sense that the Pizza Planet truck from the first Toy Story movie appears in almost every other to, Pixar movie. Yes. Go to Pizza Planet. Maxwell, you want to go to Pizza Planet? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there's a real Pizza Planet in um, Disney World, but yeah. we can't afford to go there yet. We will go there eventually. I absolutely have to go to Disney World because there's a restaurant there in <laughs> Disney World and it's a fake drive in. Yeah. And all of the seats are in cars and there's a fake sky with fake clouds and fake crickets and fake stars. Yeah. And there's a big movie theater. There's a big uh, drive in theater screen so while you're eating your dinner and you're being served by people in roller skates and stuff like that you are watching like an hour long compilation of movie theater trailers yeah 
featuring Plan 9 from Outer Space. <laughs> featuring, nice. So in my mind, I have made Disney World a religious site. Oh, yes. And so I absolutely have to go there. Mm-hmm. He, Disney, uh, uh, Ed Wood does mention uh, Disneyland um, in his I'm book, not, uh, Hollywood Rat Race. I really yes, got to reread that book. That was a great I book. I need to go to Disneyland. You need to go to Disneyland, Maxwell? Yeah. You know who lives at Disneyland? Who? Mickey Mouse lives at Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> that was a really good surprise expression. That was really, really good. Here. Here, why don't you get that? Is that Genie? Yes, it is. Hi. Oh, I was going to tell you when we came back from the from the other break. She's the one who was barking at you the last time. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. I came out of the bathroom. She had the headphones on. She was listening. And then she started barking. <laughs> nice. Was she also doing all the Foley work? Uh, the Foley work today? Yeah. No, that was all God. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And like I said before, I'm glad he's a listener. Yeah, good. So, so yay, um, God. We go to a, a little Disneyland. You love Disneyland? I mean, I need to go to a, another Disneyland podcast. Oh, you need to go to another Disneyland? Oh, okay. Cool. Any idea for homework next week? Yeah, I, yes, and I mentioned the homework before. Oh, you I did. will mention it again. Oh, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Okay. Mokiki does the flippy flop. No, no. Mokiki does the flippy flop. It was, yes. it was, uh, it was it, fun. It's best if you don't mention it. It's yeah. best if you don't mention what it is or what it's about. You know, it, it's like the Matrix. You can't really explain what the Matrix is. True. It's something that you have to just, you know, experience for yourself. Giant interdimensional lizard creatures, yes. Yes. And Lawrence Fishburne, who was Cowboy Curtis in uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Lawrence, don't call me Larry Fishburne. La- yeah, Larry, Larry Fishburne. Mm-hmm. In my mind, he will always be Cowboy Curtis from Pee Wee's Playhouse, though. Well, it was his biggest role. So in next week's episode, we hope to hopefully have uh, President Obama on again. Yes. And we apologize to the White House and to Barack o- President Obama for uh, bumping him. But we really did need the whole time to talk about Troll 2. And, and cover it in depth, I believe we did. Yeah. Like, he, if he wanted to be on during, like, one of the, like, during the Rock of Ages episode, okay. Yeah. You know, but. And the sister this, had a face like a fucking bulldog. She had jowls. Yeah. Who has jowls? Who has jowls? I love that dance she does, though. That's a really good dance. Yeah. That the sister does. Mm-hmm. Really, really good. Uh, hey, I have a random question for you. Sure. On our feed burner page, episodes 14 and 15 are both Guardians of the Galaxy. Are they? Yeah. I just realized that right now. I was looking for another episode that that President Obama could have been on. Like, oh, he could have been on that Saturday Night Live episode or maybe uh, baffled. It, he couldn't it, have been. He could not have been on during God Help Us or Wolf Cop. We needed the whole time to talk about Wolf Cop. Yes. They, they're just going to have to stay like that. Changing it is going to have to have me go through the whole sheet. OK, okay that's 15. That's 16. That's 17. That's 18. That's 19. No, <laughs> all the way down the line. I, I just randomly noticed it. Episode 22 is missing. I've known about that one for a while. 20, 20, 21, 23. You know, I see that. Okay. Well, that makes up for the fact that that doesn't that make up for the fact? I would think so. Yeah, that makes up for it. Yeah, sure. It's our show. We can do whatever we want. (laughs) That's why like a a, a co-host of the show is a three year old boy. Yes. Yeah. That is one thing that our show has that other podcasts out there do not have. 
a three-year-old boy who randomly comes in and starts talking about things. This is true. Yeah. This very, true. very strange. It's a very unique show, and everybody should be listening. And yeah. one day, they will. Yes. Whether they like it or not. Yeah. Because Obama's going to force everyone to listen to this podcast, just like Obama, he's forcing yeah. everyone to be gay married. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's all, it all makes sense. It does. I think this was a good episode. This was a good episode. We were able to um, welcome everybody into the new liberal dark ages. So, you know, that's a of good course. thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. It was a very good episode. Very entertaining. Uh, Troll 2 is uh, a classic. Yeah. A classic <laughs> right up there with Citizen Kane. Right up there with Citizen Kane, yes. <laughs> right up there. It is right up there. Oh, I wanted to do a shout out to my um my favorite cam girl, Panda Candy. Okay. Okay. Panda Candy! I scared the crap out of Maxwell. <laughs> oh my god. Are you okay, Maxwell? Are you okay? That's to me. That's I know that scared you. I'm sorry. I just had to do a shout out. I just had to do a shout out. Maxwell, do you want to do a shout out to Daddy? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, then shout out, Daddy. Shout out. You shouted out, shout out. You gave a shout out to shout outs. Shout out. This has become shout outception. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> you guys, this is getting way too meta, guys. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> Max, Bella, stop shouting out to shouting out to shouting outs. So you shout guys, out, shout out, shout this is too meta. Shout out, shout out, shout out. What is this? An episode of Community? Stop it! <laughs> Another I ABC mean, I, after school special. An ABC after school special. Kirk Cameron presents. Shout out! The story addiction. of Julie. Yeah. She tried one marijuana's, and could not stop shouting out. <laughs> could not stop shouting out. Oh, there's um, there's something I keep meaning to mention on my blog. Oh, the drawing. We didn't do the drawing. Yeah, we need to do the drawing. And I had like this random story that I just came up with. Go ahead. It's something I keep meaning to write out on my blog, but I just can't find the time to sit down and blog anymore. So I thought I'd mention it on the podcast. So we live in Oklahoma. Hold on. I, I will. Hold on. Hold on. We live in Oklahoma and... So what that means is about three blocks away is a huge Indian reservation. It's the Kickapoo Indian Reservation. Yeah. Okay. Spelled kick a poo as one word. It's the Kickapoo Indian Reservation. I've and I've lived here long enough to not laugh every time I see it on a sign. Yeah. So, um, and so th- th- they've done a great job with the small amount of space that they have because there's, uh, there's like the, the Kickapoo, uh, uh, golf, uh, courses Uh and there's a, uh, health and wellness center. There's a place for printing. There's an Indian taco store. The Kickapoo dancers. Yeah. There's a bowling alley, a pizza place. There's uh, two casinos. There's a, a supermarket that we do all of our shopping at. Um, and there is an arena. It's called the Fire Lake Arena. And I thought, who would want to come here? Like, who <laughs> would ever say, I am going to I'm going to do a concert and then show up. In the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. So, uh, a a couple of weeks ago, they announced that Seether, the band, was going to do a concert here. Seether. Seether. Okay. Uh, And I I couldn't believe that because I love the band Seether. And it's like, oh my God, they're coming to two and a half blocks away. Yeah, yeah, Are you yeah. saying Old McDonald had a farm, Maxwell? No. Old Mickey had a farm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Old Mickey had a farm? No. Mickey had a farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah. Then. 
So then I, I got really excited because like a band I really like is playing two and a half blocks away. So I went to go check and see what tickets are, and and tick like the cheapest ticket was forty dollars. Okay. And so I really started debating it because I like this band, but number one, I don't know if I like forty dollars worth of this band. Yeah. And number two, I don't know if I want to spend forty dollars to see someone at two and a half blocks away because like that's kind of like sad, I guess. Mm -hmm. So then I said, okay, well, maybe I won't see Seether in concert at the Fire Lake Arena. Let me see who else is coming to the Fire Lake Arena. And a bunch of people are coming to the Fire Lake Arena. There's Country Guy I've Never Heard Of. Country Guy I've Never Heard Of. Yeah. UFC Knockoff I've Never Heard Of. Country Guy I've Never Heard Of. And then an independent wrestling show. Oh, okay. And I said, wow, there's some sort of wrestling show happening in like a month and a half. Let me see who's going to be here. And there's a whole bunch of local guys and then the occasional once famous wrestling celebrity. Yeah. Jake the Snake Roberts is going to be here. Uh-huh. Okay. As well as uh, former WWE champion Alberto Del Rio who now goes by Alberto El Patron and wrestles a lot of the main events at Lucha Underground. Oh, okay, nice. Isn't that weird? (laughs) Uh, uh, Number one contender for the Lucha Underground Championship, Alberto El Patron, is coming to do a wrestling show two and a half blocks away from me. You're going to have to go to that. The cheapest tickets are $10. Oh, totally doable. And and my wife said, do they have any VIP tickets? And I said, yes, VIP tickets are $90 and you get to meet the wrestlers. I don't want that. <laughs> and she said, why don't you want that? And I said, I like some of these wrestlers so much that it would be like uh, Adam Warrock. Like I would just be, I like your things. Yeah. I I like you when you do stuff. Okay, bye. And then I would just run into a corner and cry. (laughs) Like, that's how much you mean to me. I can't do words good. (laughs) So I told her, please, whatever you do, do not get me VIP tickets. I do not know what I would do if I met all of these people. (laughs) So hopefully she doesn't get me VIP tickets because that would just be weird. Yeah. Okay. Yes, Maxwell? What are you? I don't mind. What did you just say, Maxwell? I don't like big butts, I can't lie. You don't like big butts and you can't lie? No. I thought you liked big butts and you cannot lie. I don't like butts. You don't like butts? No. I thought you liked big butts. In fact, you wrote a song about it. Would you like to sing it right now? No. For my podcast? No. I bet my podcast would like it if you sang it. No. You go for it. Go for it. Sing it. Go for it. Sing it really loud. You can do it. I have faith in you. You can do it. Sing it. I don't want to. You don't want to? Okay, you don't have to. Um, uh, Why don't we do the drawing? Okay, that sounds like a good idea. I have got the magic hat, and I am... Shaking it. I am shaking it, and Jeannie is here to pull one out. I'm pulling one out. I'm pulling one out, baby. Okay, who is it? Let's see. Um, yeah. Amanda Whirl Mills. Woohoo! Yay! We're going to have to find Yay! Amanda. Clap, Maxwell. Clap. There you go. I will be contacting Amanda after this show airs and let her know that she has won. Awesome. (laughs) Awesome. Yeah. Awesome, Maxwell. Awesome. Awesome. I keep expecting the reaction like, what I win? Who are you? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 
but no, good stuff. Good stuff. Good times. Good, good stuff, t- yes. Good times. Good times. Good times. Good times. Yes. Good times. Good times, Maxwell. Go- good gorilla times. podcast drawings. That's what this is. <laughs> yes, very much so. You've run one a prize. For what? Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, just 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 roll with it. He just, just rolls. Just give me your mailing address. <laughs> E-I-E-I-O. E-I-E-I-O. I think this was a good episode. Maxwell, do you think this was a good episode? Yeah. Say, this is a good podcast. This is a good podcast. Say, this is an awesome podcast. This is an awesome podcast. That's kind of your catchphrase. <laughs> you started a couple of episodes of this podcast. Did you know that? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. You're like, oh, whatever. It's not a big thing. I want to do something for the podcast. You want to do something for the podcast? What do you want to do? I want to sing something. You want to sing something for the podcast? Yeah. Okay. Sing something for the podcast. Mickey Donald had a farm. Yeah, yeah, yo. Yes, Mickey and Donald had a farm. Thank you. Everyone is moved to tears. It was a gay farm. Yeah. yeah. And they can do that now, thanks to Barack Obama. Yeah. <laughs> Maxwell thought that was hilarious. Mickey and Donald can do all the gay farming that they want now. Yeah. Which makes so me... Next which week- makes me- it, I, I got to admit it, it kind of freaks me out when I think of them plowing. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit. I imagine Donald's pretty loud when he's doing it. He probably sounds a lot like when he's angry. And gets spit everywhere. Yeah. You know, like a lot of that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So next week, we will be doing... The Disney Pixar film Inside Out is going to be a great episode. Um, and for homework next week, Google Mokiki does the sloppy swish. M O K I K I. Mokiki does the sloppy swish. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve. And with me is Maxwell. Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Now say goodbye, podcast. Goodbye, podcast. Say goodbye, you godless heathens. Goodbye, you poopy. Goodbye, you. You hear me, podcast?